Well, it looks like we're live. So we've launched. So we're already like lift off. And I 40 don't minutes know. late for lift off. Yeah, I don't know how it works from here. I got to kind of figure this out because I've never used this app before. Yeah, I've never even heard of it. It it kind of ran smoother when when we were than when we were using um, Hangouts, but there were a few hiccups on my end. Yeah. We had. And I don't like how I can't see the chat. We had trouble with. Well, you have your tablet there, don't you? That's true. Uh, somewhere. Why don't you grab your tablet? And I'm just going to set up my comments here. Yeah, go for it. Reading. What was that? I just opened up my YouTube. Oh. So I see the chats pouring in. Yeah, I'm starting to see. Uh, give me a sec. I'm just going to set up here. Oh, I don't see anything. There's nothing on your channel. We got Big Bob Bear, Lyndon. What's up, Wagwan? <laughs> Beavis and Butthead, Naringa. Oh, there it is. Okay. What's up, GZ? There Jenny. we go. Yeah, we got the usual suspects. Uh, Hillary, Ooh. Kenzo, Chu. What do you got there? The, the chat? Yeah, yeah. It didn't show. So, like, when I go to your channel... It yep. doesn't show the live streams going on. I actually had to go in and look for it and stuff, but I've got it's it. Weird. I don't know how YouTube works like that, but. Yeah, it's weird. So I haven't streamed since I was in Oregon, which was over a month ago. <laughs> I haven't made a video in six months. Um, you've been on fire. You've been killing it, man. You're putting out like a couple videos a week kind of thing. Um, interesting, I, controversial topics. Yeah. I don't like to do the same old, but what's up, Jonathan? What's up, Andy? So, I'm sure everybody here knows your channel. I mean, I'd love to give you a shout out, but I'm sure they're all subscribed to you as it is. Yeah, I pretty much wreck. It's, it's the usual suspects, which is good, which is awesome, which is awesome. Yeah. So um, tell us like, what you've been doing are you done with youtube or you know what just kind of like just life and work and um just other things kind of capturing my interest lately i um i just Record? haven't had time music? music you know what I, I i i'm still into my music i'm still into my records but i've actually been focusing a lot of time and effort and very small amounts of money into sneakers. Okay. Um, not nothing like on the level that the dudes on YouTube doing sneakers are, but I saw I a pair of your sneakers in the trash the other day. Okay. Those were literally in the garbage as I was walking out to go to the bus. And oh, I was so just like, this is way too funny because I've been really into sneakers. And I've never liked New Balance. I've never owned a pair in my life, but they have like this really strong cult following. And they were literally just like sticking in the trash. And I was like, this is too good. And I took a picture of it, of course. But um, yeah, I thought it was too funny. I thought they were legit yours. No, no, they weren't. I didn't actually say it. So to be fair, I did kind of make it out like they were mine. But no, I've never owned New Balances. Um, I don't know. It's just kind of sneaker politics let's say yeah awesome all right so i'm seeing robes has joined us in the chat he's already so robes is a moderator he's got the wrench and he's already putting people in timeouts no way is he yeah he's doing this thing but he's putting chew in timeouts him and chew have this yeah this, this crash course going that's too funny brady i like you Chu. Chu's a good kid yeah chew like chew likes to stir it up which I get where he's coming from. Yeah. No, I get it. I get it on both sides. But no, I think choose harmless. 
Unless he starts taking pot shots at Mark, but. Maestro Serapio Silva's in the house. I haven't seen Ken Williams or the other guy in a long time. I haven't seen anyone in a long time, man. Serapio <laughs> was watching when I was in Oregon. I remember that, but I don't remember much else. Tell us um, a little bit about Oregon. Like, I know I saw you on video with uh, Brandon. Did yeah. Did you get a chance to go on with, with Galen or Thomas at all? No, I actually spent a lot of time with them, but it was just kind of, you know, we're just like, you know what? I don't really have time for a music, uh, music video. I don't really have time for a video. Do you just want to hang out? I was like, yeah, sure, man. We didn't have a lot of time. So we pretty much hooked up early afternoon and we hung out, you know, till pretty late. And I want to say we even hung out a second day, but I can't even remember now. It's like a month ago, man. I can't even remember that far back. Yeah. But no, I, I had an awesome, I just totally fell in love with Oregon. I love it. Totally loved it there. That's um, awesome. Portland's so much better than I expected. It's, I don't know. It's, it's very different than I expected, but in a really good way. Yeah. Um, you know, everyone's talking about like keep Portland weird and stuff. And I was like, man, this is a really nice, modern, clean city. Like I'm from Hamilton, man. I've seen like the weirdest shit on the planet. I'm from Hamilton and I lived in Jakarta. I've seen the weirdest shit on yeah. this planet. And if, it wasn't none if, of that was in Oregon. None if, of that was in Portland. If these guys aren't uh familiar with Hamilton, I suggest Google Hamilton, Ontario, and it just looks like this this industrial like space age town right it's all just like domes and and these weird chimneys and shit i don't know it's such a bizarre place it's not it's very unusual you don't see things like this very often yeah and hamilton had a really booming economy back in the 90s yeah um, or up until the 90s, 90s. 90s yeah and the steel industry just tanked and it's just, man, there's a lot of really poor people here, a lot of homelessness and stuff. And um, it's already always been like a really progressive city and stuff. And it's like really big union town, um, but it's really tough and working class. Like when I was in primary school or even in going into like junior high school, if someone came to our school from hamilton you were like you don't mess with them because they're going to be nasty they're going to know how to fight they're going to be you know one tough cookie kind of thing yeah so it's a really weird place like that i remember driving like my dad would drive us through hamilton in the mm -hmm. 80s and every time we would drive through it was always a bit like a little bit freaked out just because how weird it was eh? Mm -hmm. so untraditional such an untraditional town yeah, it is. That's a perfect way to describe it, yeah. So I just noticed a comment I want to pick up on here. The scented, the scented soldier shaves. Krista, how do you appear to have such a fresh haircut with all the social distancing measures in place? I actually booked my appointment a couple weeks in advance, and it was literally, I was like the second or third last customer that they took before they closed. So I went in on the last day they were open and I was like in the second or third slot and they, the next day they closed. So to be fair, I booked it weeks. Yeah, I booked it two weeks before everything started getting hectic. Um, and my barber is damn good. So he knew what he was doing. Awesome. Uh, Rose yeah. pooped once in Hamilton. I hope that was in a bathroom. What's that? Oh, Rose. Rose. I pooped yeah. once in Hamilton. Do you want to give us your scent of the day? Yeah, sure. Um, I'm wearing, I don't know, I thought this might be suitable for today. Zonka. Um, it's kind of spring, but it has some kind of wintry undertones. So I kind of thought it would be good for i don't know today was really gray and dreary but it was quite warm um so i thought that might do the trick for me it's a weird one i've kind of is it incensey you know what i don't really find it to be honestly i i kind of struggled with this since i got it 
I got this from our mutual friend, you know, Anthony James, Anvil and Forge. What is it? No. Anvil, yeah. Anvil, Anvil and Forge, yeah. On, on Instagram. Right. Yeah, maybe it's a bit smoky, a bit spicy, but it's quite earthy. It's a little bit green. It's good. I've just, I don't know, I've not really found an occasion to wear it, just given my work climate. Not that I can't wear perfume to work, but just that I'm in kind of this weird environment where I'm both on the sales floor, but I'm also in the back. You know what I mean? Yeah. So I kind of do two roles where I'm interacting with customers, but I'm also around management and around, you know, senior staff and I don't know. So I just don't, I don't get too daring in this one. I, I think I wore this once to work and as I add, it's kind of weird. It's, it's hard for me to, to read this one, but. It's that weird, eh? I think it's just, I always pegged it as a, as a, um, uh spring fragrance and then wearing it today like i think today's a pretty good fall uh spring day you know with the exception of the real cloudiness but i I don't think it is i think it's more fall time because it is quite spicy now that i you know smell it close up opening again well i'm I don't know if you've been watching. I know you don't do a whole lot of YouTube, but I'm kind of in t- month two of Dior month. I was planning on doing one month, but I've just <laughs> kind of gone crazy with Dior Prive. And I'm in 2020. Have you smelt this? Yeah, I smelled it when I was at your place last time. Okay. So this is the second time I've worn this. And I'd say this is better than a lot of the garbage you're going to find at Duty Free. Mm. but it's still not i can see why people are so upset because it's like they lost their beloved original yeah i get it and that's what i went sorry i just want to throw this out real quick i just want to give a shout out to robert duncan he mentioned the recommendation on french lover he loves it i've been talking to him a lot lately he says you owe me tacos still. Apparently he sent money for our live stream at Garlon and he said, go buy tacos with Christo. And I never got any tacos, man, but I saw you got, you got chicken wings. I saw you eating tacos with someone else. (laughs) Those chicken wings (laughs) were before that was ever even sent over by Robert. But we usually go for grub once we're done streaming. No, we do. I was joking. And he, cause he's like, I hope Eugene got you tacos. And I was like, no man, but he's eating tacos with someone else on YouTube. (laughs) Nah, man. I mean, we're talking about hooking up and, and, but with all this isolation shit and, and, and work, it's a weird fucking time, man. It Um, is. So we're still working. Like we thought we were going to go off because, um, you know, we're supplying automakers with parts and, and now that Ford and GM and Chrysler and, and Honda are all down. We thought we were going to be shut down as well, but, um, Right. My owner said, "Come, you want to make money? Come to work." And uh, we're still banging parts, right? Yeah, you got to do what you got to do, man. And so I work in a very industrial part of town, and I, I, I'm driving to work, and I see all these parking lots are full of cars. People are still working, you know. You um, know, I'm, I'm in East End Hamilton, and you know, okay, if I go to the mall, if I go to the supermarket, that's a different story because the supermarkets are really busy. The malls are dead. But if I just open up my, if I just look out my window on, you know, Monday afternoon, it just looks like normal. But again, you know, Hamilton's a really industrial city. You know, they're not going to shut down the steel mills. They're not going to shut down. No, no, they're essential, right? Yeah. Yeah. The only place that isn't working, are you familiar with Mizuno? Oh. So they make like sporting gear, baseball gloves. Yeah, okay. That's what I was going to say. They're the building right next to us and they've they've got zero cars in the parking lot. But other than them, everybody else is working. Yeah. But with Mizuno years ago, when I first started working here 15 years ago, I'd be able to go into their back dump and pull out like brand new baseball leather mitts with like a little five inch scratch on the leather. And really? Yeah. It was just like a little scratch on it and they throw them out. 
And everyone beats you to them now. Oh, now? Now they actually take a razor and they destroy them before they throw no them way. out. Yeah. How wasteful. Like, they yeah. could donate those to, like, a kid's baseball. You can go you know, back like, there any day and find, like, a uh, a golf bag, golf clubs, baseball bats, um, cleats. Anything you'd find their name on a sporting goods store. So they're constantly throwing that shit out. Wow. I had no idea they would even would have even made that here. Yeah. Oh, Jeremy yeah. Hines got his wrench, I just saw. Yeah. Um so okay, so what's been going on perfume wise for you other than your Dior, which I have noticed? Well, you know what? I feel really horrible with what's going on and I I don't know, I just get I don't feel like it's a good time to be buying perfume just because of the uncertainty. Um, I don't know. Like, like I, I see people are struggling to pay their bills and, and, um, oh, right, right. You know, I don't know. Just doesn't feel good. Fair enough. I'm just happy that I'm able to pay my rent and pay my bills. And I'm really, honestly, I'm fucking spoiled. Like, I keep thinking I'd love to get something, but then I'll wear something random. I'm like, man, I, I should wear this more often because I really enjoy it. Like, why do I need to buy anything new, you know? Yeah, I appreciate what you have. Yeah, I've, I've exactly. definitely like, been doing that. It's nice to shop your own collection once in a while. Mm -hmm. I've been, um, you know, honestly, like, that's why I don't know. I've had people like, Hey, what's going on? How come you're not going live? How come, you know, you're not doing videos. It's like, I got nothing to say. I don't buy new perfume. Right. You know, I'm yeah. just trying to be less wasteful and, you know, wear what I have. And I found some stuff that I appreciate and that I enjoy that I kind of overlooked for a while, but I don't know. I'm just really disappointed with my collection. I don't know. There's a few heavy hitters and I got some bottles in front of me, but we'll kind of space it out over, you know, an hour, whatever, two hours that we do. I don't know how much time you got, but I might need to plug in my charger in a couple minutes, but I got uh, lots of time. Oh, I got to plug in my charger as well. But um, somebody was asking me, I seen Heinz just posted about patchouli ardent. And somebody, I was talking to somebody about Guerlain's new releases and I was like, yeah, I'm kind of curious now with all this isolation and malls being closed and stuff. How are people going to get like, what's up with these new releases? What's going to happen? So I contacted one of the reps at Guerlain and I, I said, what's going on with these new releases?" I felt really stupid asking. Okay. But uh, she said, basically... She said, whatever new stuff, so Patchouli Ardent and the new Lum Ideal Extreme, if they haven't been like poured and packed and shipped, they're probably going to be delayed because Guerlain's right. stopped production on perfume and they're making hand sanitizer now. Right. Yeah, I saw that in the Guerlain posts on Instagram. Which, which only makes sense. Which is cool, you know, you got to give them a bit of credit for that. Like, it's obviously a PR stunt, but that's still pretty cool. Yeah, and they're losing a ton of cash, I mean, making sanitizer. But, I mean, even if they weren't, I, I can't imagine too many people buying perfume these days. You no. know what I mean? No. And I'm kind of, I'm kind of wondering, like, what happens to all these these smaller brands that don't have the big corporate backing behind them, like, you know, the, the, the small niche brands that are, well, you know, self-maintained. Yeah. I guess unless you're in a, a country where you're above board paying your taxes, um, you're not going to get a, you're not going to get a sniff of anything from anyone, but yeah. Um, it is true. Like, you know, I'm sure a lot of these people that are doing DIY perfumery, it's just like they probably make so little off of it, they don't need to report it on their taxes or they just choose not to. And yeah, if, in that case, government's not going to give you a cent if you're not paying into them already. 
Yeah, right, right. But I don't know. Yeah, it is. It is. You know, it's it's depressing to think about. Like, I will be stretched for money for April, seeing how long this lasts. But you know, I should be okay enough. But yeah, like there's people who definitely, you know, it's it's kind of depressing to think about it. All this just because, you know, some dude ate some freaky bat soup. I don't think that's what really happened. But well, that's, they, you know, it was, they can sell it, us it, anything. What's that? They can sell us any story they want. They always they usually sell you everything but the truth. Well, okay, so I know a lot. Okay, not a lot, but like H1N1 was from people eating tainted chicken. You know where I, you know, I don't want to get into that stuff, but um, and yeah, so apparently it is from unsanitary conditions and people eating animals you shouldn't be eating, especially in unsanitary. I don't know. That's what I've heard, and I've heard it pretty consistently. But yeah, I could be wrong. Yeah, everybody's getting free money for sitting at home. I, I see the comments here. Um, Jonathan asking about the devil sent me. I have no idea, Jonathan. I don't see his comments either, and I'm not sure why. I haven't blocked him. Um, I, I don't know why. That's um, that's yeah, uh, chat. chat, right? I don't see anything. I don't know. Like if Chet's watching and he's not able to comment, I don't see the comments at all. Yeah, just send me and send me or Eugene an, a message on Instagram, but I don't I don't see anything if you see anything on your phone. It's funny though, like uh um Ashton would be live streaming and I'd be commenting and he'd never like I noticed that my comments weren't coming up. So I was like, dude, what the f did you like block me in your comments or what? And he's like, No, I never did. And then, you know, a couple of live streams would pass and the same thing, I'm like did you block me? Cause you know, my, I can't even see my comments and he's like, no, I never did. And then he had to go hmm. into settings and then add me specifically for some reason. Hmm. Um, I don't know. Maybe I just one time used the keyword or something and it blocked. Like, yeah, it can. I yeah, exactly. Out. It's just like algorithms like YouTube. Okay. You know, Mark and Jeremy are, you know, moderating and stuff, but if they're not doing anything and they say they're not, and I'll believe them, but yeah, they could have, you know, even if they're like, you know, what's up, bitches, or something, like, it's just going to pick that up in an algorithm and block them and whatever. But, yeah, like, if, if, if Chet's watching and he's not able to get through, just PM me or Eugene. I'll have to add him later separately. Ever had mad cow disease? Fuck. How, no. How but, is that one? That's what's like that? mad cow. What is that, like a 20-year-old virus or something? Like when was it around yeah, or when was yeah. it? That was, yeah, that was late nineties, early two thousands. Everyone was talking mad cow. That, that stuff's really dark though. Like, holy crap, man. It's basically from feeding cows, other cows brains. <laughs> and it just literally shuts off their nervous system and it can be transferred, you know, at least relatively to humans. But now they're feeding cows like grain and corn and shit, all stuff that they don't naturally process. Right? Uh, I mean, I don't know about that. I don't know. All right. So afternoon, my evening scent came home, took a shower, and I'm in this now, which I like for nice. Comfort. Oh, that's um, pre oh, pre premiere. Oh, premiere, yeah. Yeah. Okay, that's what I thought. So this I is, got my bottle from the same place as you did. I haven't used it much, to be honest. But again, no. just my work environment. I can't wear something that feminine. Really? You think this is femme? To the average person, definitely. Yeah. 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 Okay. I would wear it. I love it. I totally love it. But I just wouldn't. Again, if, if, if in a retail or, you know, front of the store environment, I can't. I can't wear it. I, I love it. It's just so, like masterfully blended like just so creamy and fluent and warm and cozy yeah yeah oh yeah lots of yeah that mad cow thing perked up a lot of people there yeah apparently humans can get uh, i can't remember the name of it, but there's a virus that 
you can get from eating body parts, especially the brain of another, you know, species, the same species and humans will get it. Like there's cannibals that still live in parts of Indonesia and yeah. they'll get this human mad cow disease. I can't remember the name, but yeah, it's, it's really freaky stuff. And it does basically the same thing because it's just like from eating from an animal eating the same species as brain. Like cannibalism. Cannibalism. Yeah, cannibal eating, yeah, like a human eating another human's brain. There's this, um, I don't know. <laughs> Man, I'm, I'm an idiot. I shouldn't even be talking about this stuff. <laughs> Heinz wants to know what about mad reviewer disease. <laughs> That's a whole other thing, man. That's a whole other thing. Well, then, then we had swine flu and bird flu and H1. Yeah. And I don't even And I've know. been talking about this, of course. I was in Southeast Asia when SARS and H1N1 was like the biggest thing in the world. I actually flew to Malaysia with a cold when H1N1 was like at the absolute apex. Um, luckily, they're screening material screening devices were advanced enough to know that I just had a cold and didn't have avian flu because that would have been pretty crappy because I was going for holiday. Yeah. But yeah, my, there's an American guy I worked with when um, SARS broke out, I had just moved to Indonesia and it was like Singapore was like the epicenter or where it was really growing and I worked with this American guy. We, we worked on like the seventh floor of a, um, uh, like the business offices above a shopping mall. And on the eighth floor right above us, there was a church. So like every Thursday when we left at nine o'clock, I don't know who goes to church on a Thursday night, but they did. But the um, Alcoholics Anonymous class, you know, forms. They were definitely a church group. I don't know, man. I don't know. But, um, and so what would happen is there were only two elevators in like this 30 story uh, business office, whatever. Yeah. And every Thursday, no fail, we would have to wait two or three elevators even to get in. And I lived right next to them. And uh, so we would always share a cab together. And there's like, <laughs> all these like Chinese Indonesian people coming out of church and he gets in, he's like a big, 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 big American guy. Like he's probably six, three, six, four. He's an like ex football player. And so he already stands out enough and uh, we're sitting in the elevator and I knew he was doing it just to like rile people up. And he, he would just like, he's like, they don't even know what I'm saying right now. So it doesn't really matter. I'm just going to cough and say Singapore, Singapore, Singapore. <laughs> and then you just go. <laughs> oh man, I just got back from Singapore and they just be like stuck against the walls. And like, man, that's so wrong. Dude, That's so wrong, but he loved it. He thought it was hilarious. People are going to jail for doing that these days. With uh, I've heard that, man. There yeah. was that lady in the States who was yeah. like coughing on shit at Walmart. Coughing on was old people. States? People are oh. licking toilet bowl seats and doing like the coronavirus challenge. You know what? That's that that's stupid. But like going, I think it was a, an American woman who went into Walmart and she was charged for destroying like thirty five thousand dollars in merchandise for coughing on it. Yeah, and it's like that's stuff that people could have used. Like that's just, oh, I don't know. That really bothers me. I hate that. Yeah, people are that's disturbed. Stuff. Kind of disturbing. Duncan Spake said, "I'm pretty smart, so I'm gonna." Gonna take, I'm gonna read that comment. Like the one two. All right, let's get into the comments here. Yeah, it's like okay, so this is funny as well because I'm just seeing people talking about coughing now because I obviously brought it up. But so when I was in Oregon, I don't smoke habitually, but I I smoke very very rarely socially and i totally admit i love american cigarettes especially like Marlboro. some of the heavier camels they're very strong i find them but they're really flavorful like i don't know the cigarettes in canada they're just gross they just taste like tobacco whereas the american ones i find actually have flavor to them 
Yeah. So I smoked a pack or two in like the weekend or like the, I don't know, I was there for five or six days, smoked maybe two packs, which isn't a lot. Um, considering, you know, I'm in a hotel, I can't smoke inside, whatever. Anyway, so I brought back a couple packs with me. I brought back a bunch of cigars because I do love cigars and they're expensive in Canada. But um, so it's like, you know, after smoking like four or five packs of cigarettes in a month, which I'm not used to, it's kind of like, you know, of course Ugh. my lungs are kind of yeah. getting better. So I'm all like trying not to cough because I smoked like five packs of cigarettes in a month. I noticed your Yankee hipsters just entered the chat. Who's that? Galen. Oh, eighth real. I didn't know that's what he was referred to as. <laughs> I, I just called him that. Blazing the hook of the entire time. Yeah, so I got to give a shout out to Galen, the eighth realist. Um, uh, everyone in Portland was awesome. And, you know, Galen as well. Like, it was just such a cool place. Loved it. I don't know. I didn't notice if he had. He used to be cool. He says I used to be cool. Where was it? I didn't see that. Right at the bottom there. Is that <laughs> why you gave the goatee, Galen? Is it to feel like a little bit younger? You know what? That's the thing. I, I never asked him this, but he, he made some references, some cultural references that would make me feel that he's about the same age as me, but he's the kind of guy, like if he shaved off his facial hair, it'd be like, I couldn't tell if he was 20 or if he was 50. I don't, yeah, I, I don't know how old he is either. I used to have a Fu Manchu, he says. Really? That's pretty cool. I like Fu Manchus. Yeah, the handlebars? I could, I could almost grow one, almost. Oh, How was that perfume shop in Portland? Tell us about that. Like, was it all, so, was there any designer duty-free crap in there or was it all in the niche? You know what? Um, oh, uh, okay. So, sorry, what do you mean? Like, the I saw you guys like, went to a perfume shop. You posted something from a Portland perfume yeah, shop. Yeah, two. Yeah, we went to two and Galen will help me here. Um, the one I went with him to was, hang on. Um, looking for my phone, but it's right in front of me. Hang on, um, just hang on to cut you off, guys. If you haven't subbed to Atherealist, his uh thing is his banners posted at the bottom of the video. There, go and check out his page. Great reviewer and super nice guy too. Yeah. But forget about this robes, dude. Scented Soldier, also another reviewer, and and Hillary here, the Burrow. Nerdy fragrance. I didn't know the Scented Soldier was a reviewer. I'll, I'll definitely get on his channel. Um, Fumari, yeah. Fumari was all niche. And then I went to one the day before with Brandon, and we hoped to film a video there. But um, the, I don't know, whoever was working at the time wasn't really feeling it. So they, they didn't let us film a video there. But so... Um, Fumari was really cool. It's like a lot of indie stuff, a lot of niche stuff. They wouldn't let you film a video? Yeah, I don't want to get too much into it on the camera. Um, <laughs> okay. But I'll, I'll text you about it later. Wow. But, You'd yeah. think that they wouldn't mind like the extra, extra promo or something, right? Yeah, our sentiments exactly. But uh, right, anyway. We'll talk about it later. But yeah, so the, the place you went to first, and Galen will know what it's called. Um, if he's still watching or if he got bored and left already. Um, but yeah, uh, we went in there and it was really cool because they had a lot of really rare, obscure designer stuff that I'd never even heard of. Designer? Um, yeah, yeah. Okay. But it was like, it, they're, they're kind of connected, but they're different entities. Like the owners have a connection but the one solely niche in indie and the other ones just everything across the board. Yeah. Um, but the one that were everything across the board, they had some really cool rare stuff. Anything for, stand out for you? 
You know what? They did, but there was stuff that's so obscure I'd never even heard of it. There was like a Phantom of the Opera perfume that Brandon made me try. And I was like, man, this is actually kind of cool. Yeah. It was like a really classic musky fougere. So Brandon's into all of those uh, Middle Eastern ouds and and artisanal yeah. ouds. Did you get to try any of those? I did, yeah. We did a, a couple videos on his channel. We delved mildly into it but like man dude's knowledge of that is way beyond mine yeah um so i think he was kind of taking it easy with me like i, I think that's all pre he pretty much reviews on his channel is like a region what's the other yeah, yeah really obscure um, indie stuff and ooh. in middle eastern yeah i i don't even know that i can't remember the names mm-hmm all those Middle Eastern brands. Yeah. Well, cool. Cool, cool. Um, yeah, no, it was good. Good time. I'd love to go back, but it's just so far, and it's just not a common destination for Canadians, or at least Central or Eastern Canadians. It's it's a pain in the pain in the hole to get there. So yeah, maybe if some more direct flights or open it up i'd love to go back beef curtains are you working i know beef curtains is a machinist in a similar trade as mine uh robert duncan asking for us to pick his next fragrance oh my that's I risky think, i think he's just gotten into the frederick mulls from what i understand yeah i i reckon i think i can't remember what it was we texted maybe a week ago or so and uh he was telling me about some things that he tried uh, from mall that he really liked. And I, I recommended him check out French lover. And he was just saying he really liked that one too. He said he just, I think he said he, he picked something up recently. Yeah, I know he picked up blood of Chanel. He was really, um, really pumped about that. I can't remember. This is going back a week ago and I can barely remember that now. If anyone wants to see robes, come on the chat. Type 69. Did someone say, oh, they, oh, he did. He said he might have some time in a couple of minutes. I think he's just going to go shave his Fu Manchu. <laughs> yeah, I saw, I don't know. I haven't, I, I'm so ignorant on Instagram, but he had a real like beastie boys look going on a couple weeks ago, which I was loving. Who, Mark? Yeah, yeah. It was like he just rap he just dropped like his nineties like rap album or something. <laughs> I think he's just braiding his pubes right now. What? <laughs> he, he's he said he's just braiding them. <laughs> um, oh, look at, oh, we got a, a ninety six. We got El Gonzo in the house. Brain of Joey. Oh, yeah. Okay. Robert Duncan says uh, moon and musk ravageur. Yeah. I remember he had something mainstream and he had something out there. Catherine's in the house and she just picked up a one ounce of a pre Leon day. Wow. Sealed X trait. Damn. I still got to get like the regular, the regular a pre Leon day. I think I have a really old tester of that. I didn't know I it was that weird. too. What's that? I think you do too. Okay. Is it that rare? rare? Well, I've never seen it anywhere except for the Guerlain boutique. Oh yeah? Yeah. Hmm. I've never seen it on a discount shop or in a discount store. They're discontinuing it. See, I, I asked, Catherine says they're discontinuing it, but I talked to the boutique and they haven't heard anything about that. So, and they've been talking for the last five years about discount continuing a pre leon day and you know it's always just kind of this rumor vadim so do you have any other bottles in front of you do you have anything else there to talk about I have the two um i don't know what do you want to talk about okay well i'll talk about this just because this came up very recently and um a couple things kind of stood out about it so um one of the few 
things opened in my area is other than like restaurants or supermarkets is the drugstore, old shoppers. And I hadn't been in for like a couple weeks. So anyone, any Canadians here, they're going to know it. They know the 1999 discount shelf. I'm sure you know that as well. And sometimes there's really cool stuff, but you got to grab it like immediately, or I'm pretty sure people buy it, um, you know, in bulk to just sell in their stores. Yeah. Uh, so I was in yesterday. I want, no, no, no. It wasn't yesterday. Um, what day is it? I find myself saying it recently. So I was in on Saturday and they had about 12 bottles of, Aramis Tuscany. Okay. And 100 mil. I was like, you know what? Cool. I bought um, Devon and I liked it. So I'm just going to grab the Tuscany. 20 bucks, 100 mil, new in box, reputable, you know, store shoppers. And um, I grabbed it and they also had bottles of um, something I've never really heard of or tried is uh, Roberto Cavalli Uomo. Okay. Which I looked up online and people were saying it's kind of like a musky fougere, people comparing it to Narciso, which I don't know about that, but I've never tried it. So I went back in today, probably about 48 hours as I was last in there. All of the Tuscany's gone, all of the um, Cavalli Uomo were gone. So I totally missed that, unfortunately. I'm not familiar um, with either, to be honest. Yeah, the, the the Cavalli, like I said, I've never even smelled it. I've never even seen it, never even heard of it. Um, I just looked it up on Fragrantica really quick. And I was like, the notes kind of, meh. And there were a lot of, like, tepid reviews. So I was like, you know what? I'll just come back. I'll do a little bit more research and maybe grab a bottle Monday, Tuesday, whenever I go for groceries next. And, yeah, I went in and... Yeah. All the Tuscanies were gone. All the Cavallis were gone. The shoppers so by my house was... has mostly like, you know, um, the celebrity sense, nothing worth picking up. You know what? Have a look now and again, because seriously, some stuff comes up that really surprises me. That's where I got um, Paco Roban por Homme. I thought that yeah. was a great deal for, for 20 bucks. Absolutely. I yeah. buy that over and over again for 20 bucks. I, I like the Tuscany. I think I prefer Devon, the other Aramis I picked up, but yeah, it's, it's Aramis, you know, it's a pretty decent brand for 20 bucks, hundred mil. Um, I picked up uh, the, uh, what is it? Sung? Sung Alfred Home. Sung. Yeah. I think you told me you got Sung Home. Yeah. The, the purple, purple bottle. Which yeah. Is a it's la is it lavender. Awesome. Yeah, it's like lavender patchouli leather, classic masculine, but it's good. Twenty bucks, hundred mil. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Can't go wrong. Just as you messaged me that, I was at the discounter and I mm -hmm. went over to give it a sniff, and I was like, "Yeah, that's that's pretty good." Mm -hmm. For twenty bucks. But yeah, there's really cool stuff. So I think that's maybe you know my last review, my actual last review, my actual last recorded video was for the Paco Rabanne Por Homme this summer. It's at like three and a half thousand views, which is like I never would have thought that it would be that high. That's pretty high for well, a review for me. Quite a popular fragrance. Like a lot yeah, of yeah, it's uh, definitely got that time and place. You know, I think shaving community it's really big. Classic masculine community it's really big. Vintage community it's really big. So I think it kind of hits a few yeah. marks. I didn't think of that. I really didn't think about that until you know opening it up a couple months later is like there's over 3000 views on this. That's just like the scented soldier here. He does a lot of that wet. I think the wet shaving stuff, and maybe he can confirm if it's, you know, one of their go-tos. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, have you gotten into your rogue samples? Sorry. Have you gotten into your rogue samples yet? No, nah, man. I just, I, I kind of, I got them. I was really excited about them and then I just put them on the shelf and I've just, to be honest, I've not had the time or motivation to test things and I've not really Something been able to wear them. Something happened to your mic. 
Me? Did you, yeah, did you do something? Nothing. It sounds Is different. saying that or are you saying Oh, that? right now it's back. Oh, okay. All right, that's better. Yeah, you know what? I'll get shit and I won't I won't wear. It. I just hold on to it for the longest time and when I'm ready then I, you know, I give it a go, but Yeah. I've bought stuff and not opened it for six months and, you know, not because I was waiting for any p particular reason, but I don't know. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. Oh, yeah. The Scented Soldier. We were just talking about Paco Rabanne Porom and Christo was saying how his review has, you know, it's really high in views. And we were wondering if that was would be something that's popular amongst wet shavers. He's I love how he asked it, though, that he missed what we were saying because his wife was yelling that food was ready. I love that. <laughs> Playing the victim, eh? <laughs> oh, my. <laughs> yeah. Grandpa. No, we're not grandpas. We like to call ourselves seasons. Seasoned. Well, you know, I, I could be a grandpa like anytime soon. Oh, yeah, man. Oh, yeah. Yeah, you know, I'm you never know. Like, yeah, I could be a grandpa. Three, four or five more years and I could be a grandpa. Three, four, five years. Okay, well, I guess if you're playing by your kids' ages. Yeah, like, my son is 15 now, my oldest. Oh, you could, you, could, you could be a grandpa right now. You just might not know yet. Yeah, yeah, you know, during this <laughs> this whole isolation. But Vladimir's pulling out his 250 mil Fev Delicious. And that will spray my... You should send it over so I can give it a good torching. We'll, we'll heat it up for you. Who won the fourth battle? Jorge Silva. Man, is that like... Old school Jorge Silva reviewer. Jorge was a good friend of mine back in the day, and he reviewed, and he had some really cool content, and then he just kind of disappeared. So I'd love to know if that's you, Jorge. I don't know, but he loves Chanel. I know that. Who won the battle between Aqua de Zio and so I think Sava um Aqua de Gio was winning when I checked last. But now was I'm... this an ongoing feud? I didn't know yeah, that. I, I put up a poll. Oh shit. Okay. I just saw the video and I was like, man, this it's Eugene, but it's it's gonna be him taking the piss. And it's gonna end with they both suck and him smashing them with like, <laughs> you know, some kind of hydraulic press or something. Yeah. Let me let me have a quick look here. Go go look. I would be interested to hear that. I'm I'm kind of curious myself. All this streaming is slowing down my laptop. Ah, oh, there you go. Making a coffee, I'm coming in wet. You're making coffee at nine o'clock at night? What kind of animal are you? He's beast mode. Man, if I drink coffee after like one o'clock, I'm just so wired, I can't sleep. Like literally can't sleep for... So Profumo is winning 56% as the worst. As the It's winning as the worst. Yeah, so it's... It's voted as the worst for between the two at 56%. So, okay, for again, forgive me, forgive me. I didn't watch the video, but what was the, so, um, what was the, it's so just like, that it, was it was just which one is worse? Vote on no, which one is worse. worse. Okay. Um, okay, sorry, which Sauvage was it that you put up against it? EDP. Okay, okay. Which is better than the EDT? but not as good as the parfum. But they're oh, all man. shit. Like, they're all duty-free garbage at the end of the day. Um, Duncan Spake, what... It, sorry, 
<laughs> what am I ignoring you about? I, everything's just happening so quickly. Yeah. I have a hard time keeping up and I'm not purposely ignoring anybody. Yeah, we're at like hundreds of comments now, but Okay, so here's a good one. Vladimir is mm -hmm. asking a pre Leonde versus Vol de Nui. I can't even comment. I'm not the person. Yeah, oh man. You're talking about like two titans. Um if I had to pick one, I would choose Vol de Nui. I can't even comment, so I'm going to stay out of this. Iris Yukoi or Iris Pudra? Um, the Maul versus the Hermes? Yeah. Uh, Hermes. I got I'm going to go with Maul. I'm going to go with the Maul. Yeah. What? Yeah. Oh, man. Now, yeah. Okoi. Yeah. But are you familiar yeah, with them. Are you familiar with the Maul? Yeah, it's good. I like it, but the Ukoyi just it's I've never smelled anything like it. Whereas I think like. Pudra I've smelled. It's it's you know the best in show, but I've smelled it before. Okay. That's me. That's just me. Oh car I, I recognize we got business. Oh, oh, there we go. Okay. I actually understand what Vladimir said. Oh my god, look who's here. Good morning. Wow. Good morning. Good morning, Mark. Maybe in Lebanon. <laughs> All right. So is Bleu de Chanel the best blue fragrance? <laughs> Let's save that for Mark. Mark, question for you. Uh, no. It's not? It's the best blue? Is it the best blue fragrance? Dylan Blue's got that, doesn't it? Dylan Blue, <laughs> Eugene, he's he's gonna take me out of the live stream right away. Yeah, you're gone. Yeah. Let's <laughs> go back to old Anui. Chew's gonna block Mark. <laughs> I'm gonna make Chew a mod. Uh oh, uh oh, it's a problem. Uh, the best blue. Wow, what a what a poor subject. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so <laughs> I got. What's that? Duncan. I've got two OGs here, two of the oldest OGs, and we're actually on a live stream with Al from Street Sense today. I'm not sure yeah. if you caught that. Al was doing the Street Sense, and we're going to try and organize a live with Al. What? Okay, this is all new to me. I'm here. Okay. You good? You set? Coffee's ready? You got your sugar, your cream. You need anything else? You, Gene. Can we get you some like towelettes or <laughs> sanitizing I need, wipes? I need some extra cream, Eugene. Get that Amazon Prime over. <laughs> he, I think he's got a mask on his mic from what it looks like there. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I don't catch my own germs. Mark's a spitter. <laughs> <laughs> of course. So have you guys ever spoken? As in? Oh, in person? We texted, but no, no. Mark, Mark's the, okay. So except for his online presence, no one I know can confirm Mark really exists except Chad. And I don't even trust Chad. <laughs> Chad. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm surprised Chad hasn't shown up in the comments. He must be on <laughs> Route 69 right about now. <laughs> His his robes oh eight spider spider sense is going off. Yeah, yeah. There he is. <laughs> there he is. No, <laughs> is he? <laughs> right when I show up. <laughs> <laughs> He's washing. I don't know. He's washing the cheese off of his feet right about now. <laughs> washing the cheese. Okay. Yeah, he came over here once after work, and he's like, I don't want to take my boots off because they smell like cheese. <laughs> Yummy. <laughs> oh, my God. Wow. Oh, well. I'll talk about the Chad. So, so what are we talking about? Well, I think we're uh, – I well, I, I'll speak for myself in saying I'm a bit miffed that um, 
Mark is uh, live with us right now. That he's a real human being? That he's real, he <laughs> apparently a real human being that is on live with us with, and, and okay, so here's the thing. I'm going to totally, I'm going to totally, uh, pull you out here eugene eugene's like hey do you do you kind of do you care if mark comes on the stream m-a-r-k and i was like who's mark and then i waited for like half an hour for a reply and he's just like sorry m-a-r-c and i was like what mark's gonna come on the stream is just like it was so funny because i didn't know who he was talking about because it came up with a k well, fuck, I'm like, how many marks are there? You know, I thought... Well, but that's, that's like, it's not, it's it's M-A-R-C. But no, but it's just funny because I literally didn't know who you meant. Like, really? I didn't, I really didn't. Really? I was like, man, it must be some dude in Toronto who's got like a faux hawk and, you know, lives at his parents' house or something. I thought he was one of those guys that just goes off one name, like Jordan or LeBron <laughs> or Mark. I don't know. Chris no, I just like that, that one letter. About. Anyways, no, I'm just kind of I, I'm I'm kind of captivated that Mark's tuning in. So we've been kind of trying to hang out, you know, yeah. whether it be all of us or two of us at least, you know, with Mark in Toronto or something or, or just whatever. Just so and I alone. First. We've yeah, actually been it. planning this live stream for like three years trying to organize one between three of us. Really? <laughs> Sorry, Warren, about a year. I didn't get the memo. <laughs> yeah, it well, goes yeah, from three years and I were year trying to, to like this morning. Uh, well. Yeah, so, okay, so Mark, uh, uh, Eugene and I have uh, talked about what we're wearing at the moment today what what have you uh found yourself in uh my center of the day was uh grand soir I okay mean, nice. nice i like yeah, grand soir i'm just wearing it for an upcoming uh video actually just uh haven't worn it too much but one of the better ones from the brand apparently it's very good i agree i've kind of lost interest in a lot of mfks i don't know if it's because of what's happened with the takeover but grand soir um absolute pour le soir uh, um, that's a jewel that's a jewel what's the um the uh the aqua celestia aqua celestia i'm absolutely in love with and i'm gonna wear that a lot this summer i haven't smelled that one actually mm -hmm. it's it's so Imagine Aqua Universalis, mm -hmm. universally, however you, you say it, uh, but put in some really nice um, subdued lime. Okay. Very nice. Very nice scent. Hmm. Oh, yeah. I saw you post on Instagram, and, and you got a nice lime from Mr. Francois Kurdian. I think he even commented on the post, didn't he? Yeah, he likes me. We're buds. Oh, there oh, you go. I didn't see that. <laughs> Very nice. <laughs> it's cool. It's cool when you see perfumers get get into it. Yeah, get into yeah. the community and 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 show support. You know, I love that. To see. I agree totally, and I think I kind of had this discussion with you, Eugene, about whether you, uh, Frederick Mull actually controls his Instagram account or not. And I, I think it is, and you don't think it is. Because he signs it, like, with an F at the end. He doesn't write Frederick. He just kind of signs it with F. And I don't know. I think he's just too big to be doing that for himself. Really? I don't see like a one-man show. I don't see him, like, you know, the engineer at the helms, like, you know, pulling levers and stuff. I see yeah. him, like, kind of just overseeing, especially now that he doesn't own the company really anymore. But that's me. That's what I always thought. Yeah, because well, it'll be like just him taking a picture of his coffee press. Yeah, kind of weird shit, like a bar of soap in the shower, right? <laughs> With those like aqua blue tiles. Those are the best type of posts. They're, no, they're, but the, yeah, like I random. They they have nothing to do with perfume or with his brand. It's just like I don't know. 
Well, I agree, though, because I think it kind of shows a human side, which is why I do think it would yeah. typically be more like him. It's less rather than like a picture of like, oh, here's the new release from Frederick Mall. Buy yeah. it. But that's my thoughts. It's less of a marketing standpoint than an actual. It's more of a personal. Yeah, it's to humanize the brand. I don't know. That's that's what Maybe. I kind of picked up. But I know it is really cool. Apparently, Instagram perfumers... Um, brand owners are more likely to interact with you on Instagram than other platforms, as I've heard. I don't know. I'm only on Instagram, really. My Facebook is kind of hundred thousand. Hundred percent, Christo is yeah. Uh, from all the platforms uh, that I've been on, uh, Twitter would be number two. Um, okay, rising. Facebook, hardly anything. Uh, well, YouTube. hang on. I did see Killian last week on a Facebook Live in one of the yeah. I think it was a Killian group. I thought that was cool as shit for somebody as big as Killian to come on a Facebook Live chat. That is pretty cool. I admit, I'm not huge on the brand, but that's cool. Regardless, I thought it was awesome just for him to do it. But yeah, you don't cool. see that often. Like, I can't recall any other perfumer of that status to come on a Facebook live. Mm -hmm. Like you see, like uh, you'll see some indie yeah. perfumers come on the odd time, but it, actually he's not a perfumer. He's a brand owner. Or Talking what about Facebook live? George Zaharoff just went on live on Facebook. Did he? Yep. Oh, okay. Just got like a little nudge here. I'm live. <clears throat> What about that character? Did, did you meet him, uh, Crystal? Did Crystal? Meet I did him? not. I didn't know he was in town. I, I don't think I'm. I don't think I'm big enough to meet. Uh, to meet Mr. Zaharoff. Crystal doesn't want to meet him. Crystal's too underground, man. If he meets oh, him, he might be a little that. bit mainstream, right? No, I'm. You two are bigger than me, man. Eugene's been reviewing for like ten minutes, and he's got more subs than me. <laughs> and Mark's obviously, you know. In a whole league of his own, but no, no, I, I, it would be cool because he seems like a really nice guy, and everybody's had really, you know, positive things to say about him and the brand and stuff. But yeah, no, I'm in Hamilton, so I get forgotten about. Oh, Hamilton! Oh, right, right, that's right. Yeah, my V Hamilton. Sorry to hear that. We. Oui. <laughs> <laughs> What can you say? I don't know. It's it's funny. Like everybody, we all. I don't know. Um, does Eugene know much about Mark's hometown? I don't want to talk too much about it, but like Dude, I don't want to know. Dox he's, or he's, anything, but he's actually a lot closer than I thought. I thought he was like eight hours away, and when he told me it was four, I'm like, "Why aren't you fucking here every weekend? Like, let's let's make this happen. What's the holdup? Four hours." Like, like I drive to winter on an occasional basis, and that's four hours away. And I, I do it like half asleep, four a.m. Right, and I'm there at eight. I'm like, I'm so distracted during the drive, I can't recall a single thing, and I'm there in a heartbeat. <laughs> four hours isn't that far. You sound like a needy girlfriend, though. Wow. <laughs> I think that's why I want you to come over to make you my bitch. <laughs> oh wow! You got, what that's that's going going you got some left um, for me? What's that? Muscovajaro? You still oh, have that? I got enough to grease you up. Oh, perfect. Jesus that's the motivation I need. <laughs> oh, he's drinking. Big boy's drinking. Oh, what it was that? What are you sipping there, Eugene? Oh, sipping there. Oh, I didn't know that. Man, you're balling over there. You got some Martel. What is that? Cognac, brah. <laughs> brah. <laughs> ESOP. And Mark's got a little bit of uh, Jameson in his uh, coffee there, I bet. <laughs> <laughs> so CDG Black, eh? That, that thing's uh, pretty good, by the way. I love it. Totally love it. Unfortunately... Um, what is it? Fragrance buy? Was that like the big one that made you buy five bottles to get free shipping? Yep. Yeah. That always pissed me off. But yeah, all their CDG are gone. It's been, they've been yeah. gone for a while, but yeah, I was kind of disappointed because I was going to grab a bunch of them. They, they had, uh, 
they got a which I love. They got a cease and desist to get rid of all the CDs. Did they? Like, yeah. is that real? I yeah, didn't they, know that. Wow. Yeah. And they were selling them two for one. What? To get rid yeah. of stock. Yeah. No I got, way. Uh, what what did I, buy? I, was, I was late on it. I got, um, what did I get? I got peppermint. They were gone like overnight. I got peppermint and uh, rhubarb from Sue. Oh. Five? Um, yeah, I've never okay. actually tried peppermint, but I got rhubarb is fantastic. Um, blind buy, but they're two for one, right? Um, I always felt they were a little pricey for just a single note, and I didn't really know mm -hmm. what I'm doing. But they're de Chafou, right? So they should be fairly good. Mm -hmm. uh, I haven't unboxed them yet, but I did get a two for one. So you are right. It, it's so it's basically like a single note, maybe a complimentary note, and then they have a similar dry down. Like yeah. I don't want to get too much into it, but I like them for what they are. But yeah, they were a little pricey when you actually break down right. what they are, how much you get, how basic packaging bottles, blah blah blah. But yeah, um, I was thinking kind of like along the lines of the Aqua Allegoria line from Galway, kind of like that. You know, something yeah. very sparkly and, and uplifting, but really doesn't have much depth in the background. That's what I'm thinking. Maybe. Okay. Um, I, I'm not going to say too much, but okay. it's... <laughs> That's my guess. There's elements that I think are similar, but yeah, they've got a little bit of a heavier base than, okay. than I'd say the Aqua Allegorias do. Decent. Okay. That might be better for spring, actually. But rhubarb, man, I love the rhubarb. That's awesome. I'm really like awesome. I, I have a cinnamon, a uh, bottle of cinnamon, but that one's, a, man, it's weird. I don't know. I don't do cinnamon very well when it's very dominant, but it's it's interesting. Cinnamon could be nice when it's dry and spicy and less sweet. Like, you don't want that cinnamon pie effect, but I like spicy, dry cinnamon. Mm-hmm. But I haven't smelt a lot of those uh, CDGs. No, it's a hard brand to, to to get samples, and you know, not a lot of people carry them. Um, so when Fragrance Buy had that, you know, I got black first of all from Fragrance Buy before that sale came on. I got that and created uh, eight ounces, right? I was telling you, Eugene, that I got those two, and then they had that sale, and I'm like, well, fuck, I just got black. But I went back, and that's what they had was limited CDGs, but. Um, it's a brand that I'd like to delve into. Like um, they have that oud one, the black pepper one, um, uh, Wonderwood, Wonder Oud. Those are ones that I'd be interested in just to sniff out. Wonderwood and Wonder Oud are very, very similar to the point that I can barely tell the difference. But really, you know, if you kind of own one, you own the both. I think, but. Yeah. I was now that you know coming back to Kennedy. There's actually a few places that sell Comme de Garçon here, but it's not easy to just go in and test a good proportion of what they have. Right. Um, there's uh, a few places in Toronto that have really limited stuff that you can try over the counter. Usually the Monocle series, and usually the um, Huig series. Yeah. But still. You know, the Monocle's only four. Is it four now? I think there's four in the Monocle series. Yep. In the Puig series, they'll typically only have three or four of them. Mm. Um, but to actually try what's in production from oh, Comme oh, de Garçon, thanks. which is a lot, yeah. it's not easy. You'd have to probably go to the Dover Street, eh, where in New York? Yeah, yeah. We had two chains that carried cdg here in toronto and they both kind of disappeared you know we can go in there and test them out yeah i remember going in with you really early like probably the first or second time we hung out and yeah. i don't even remember the name but it was like a really high-end haberdashery they were more and, yeah um, they were more clothing ch uh, chains than, yeah they weren't yeah. fragrance stores yeah but, and um Nomad that we went to, Nomad I don't think they even carry perfume anymore. They started discounting them. And yeah. They we, you remember when we got our Heelys half price? Yeah. Yeah. And then ever since then, I don't think they carry perfume anymore. Yeah. But um, so the backup bottle boss says CDG is not the best quality, in my opinion. Some weird chemical industrial metallic thing throughout the line. I think. I think they kind of focus on doing a synthetic thing. I don't think 
I think that's purposefully, isn't it, Christo? Sorry, where's that? I didn't see that. It's on the screen there. Right under your chin. Oh, it's okay. It's <laughs> pinned up there. Is not the best quality. Um, well, you know, I, I, I don't know what you want to say by quality. Like, they do, the, they're, they're the best with synthetics. They use synthetics and they, they're very open about it. Yeah. Um, and I do think that they do have a lot of industrial smelling things, but mm. I guess, it, it, you know, if you're going to smell, um, let's say two man EDT and compare it to like, you know, something from mall that's masculine woody, then yeah, you're probably going to say the malls much more, you know, well put there you go. He's got a bottle right there on hand. But then again, the price the price plays a factor too because you can get these sometimes for under a hundred bucks. Oh, eight eight eight! I sold my bottle of eight eight eight, and I regret it badly. They're just right here. <laughs> awesome! <laughs> he's, got, he's got them in like what do you call holsters? <laughs> <laughs> the tester cases. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I think it's it's a line that's not for everyone. But I think for the price, for the quality, for the perfumers, for the house, for the accessibility, I think there's not much, you know, that can compare with them. If you, you know, when you smell something like, let's say, I don't know, Boon Rose by Mall that you're going to pay three, four hundred dollars a bottle for in North America, and compare that to something from Comme des Garçons, they're going to smell totally different. They're doing synthetic. They're doing abstract, avant-garde, industrial, yeah. postmodern, blah, blah, blah. Your mic is a little bit off, Christo. I don't know. It might be my, um, my Wi-Fi that I'm on my tablet and my phone at the same time. It just, it just yeah, when you were talking. It, it's really high-pitched. Yeah. I pitched. Oh, geez. I don't know. I haven't even touched it. Hmm. But um, so the CDG, they might be a little bit synthetic, but they don't smell cheap to me. They smell like they've done. They've been done like that with a purpose. I know the last one I smell of yours was garage oh. and it smelled highly synthetic, but it didn't, oh, it didn't smell cheap to me, you know? Yeah. Yeah, I agree, and I think that's why they kind of maintain. Oh, he's got an old school bottle. What do you got? Garage and Garage and Tar. Tar, Garage and Tar. Those are my number one and number two. Nice yeah. in the old school bottle as well. Oof. The seventy-five mil garbage bags. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> I love these two. Yeah, I agree. I totally agree. I I really like dry clean. But I find it just, it's gone off my skin in such a short amount of time. Yeah. Yeah, CDG, that's, I guess that's what they're known for, right? Is their industrial look. And that's what they, um, that's what they excel in, to be quite honest. Uh, when I buy a Comme des Garçons fragrance, um, that's what I want to get from them. Um, they have some outstanding stuff that do bring you places. Avignon is just to name one. Um it's great. It has so many layers that it's simply outstanding. Um, black, also just a recent purchase from me. Um, so you got to look at different series from Comme des Garçons. Like I'm not a, you know, I, I haven't smelled everything from them. I've smelled a good chunk. Um, but yeah, there's obviously their bread and butter is that industrial uh, feel and they do it very well. I can't even think of another brand that would even come close to sniffing this kind of stuff. I love mm -hmm. it. I agree. I totally agree. Crystal. I, it's what they do, and they do it well, and they use the best perfumers in the world to do it. And they do it somehow better than brands that charge a lot more and use, you know, similar perfumers, similar raw ingredients. So I think they, I totally think they do it well. You know what I like? They kind of just do their own thing and they stick to it and they don't really take notice of what other brands are doing. They don't really care. They don't follow mm -hmm. trends. I like that. They don't follow traditions. They mm -hmm. just have their own, like their, their, their foresight and they go after it. That's what they do. 
You know, yeah. they 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 have kind of a a woody incense DNA structure, but it's kind of like their own house DNA, you know. Yeah, yeah and they were doing dry woody fragrances, you know, in the nineties. In the nineties, before yeah. anyone before they got that bad image, you know. Nowadays, you know, dry woods, you know. Everybody hates it, you know, real, real perfume or snobs, whatever. They hate the dry woods. But Comme des Garçons was doing that decades before it was was common. Yeah. So I'm getting a lot of uh, messages here about our video not showing up in their subscription feed. Mark, how do you handle when you, when you, when you live from StreamYard? How do you get it in your feed or send out the notifications? YouTube does it. All right. This is my first time using it, and I don't. I, how, how did you guys find the video if it's up in the feed? For for me, I, I got well. I have the bell on for you, so it told me that you're going live. Like I subscribed to you, and I got the okay. bell on. So yeah, because I think you have to turn on the bell now to get notifications, don't you? Yeah. It, well, yeah, you actually have right? to physically do it. So I was I was with my son, and then it went bing. Eugene is on you smells good is on live right now. Um, that's only because I had the bell on, but um, I don't know if the regular people that don't No, they're the saying it doesn't show up in their feed. Yeah. That's yeah, I didn't. I that's actually had to go to your channel and then to your videos. Oh, that's weird. Yeah. Yeah. I wonder how everyone else is getting it. Yeah, we've only got 50 people watching and two likes. So yeah, man, they're, they're right? stinking here. They're yeah, man. 46. We're down to 46 watchers. Here, go go post something to Instagram and tell people to get over here. There, I hit dislike. Maybe that'll help. <laughs> <laughs> ben Eugene from the, the analytics is just fucking going. <laughs> hey, Christo, do you remember that the, the couple of times we were getting smashed on lives and we were getting people to unlike our video and dislike it? And every yeah. time, you know, you see, reach a certain level, Krista would be doing shots. Yeah. Oh, well, no, I say I, I remember, but I don't really remember. <laughs> We'd have like 75 likes on the stream. And we said, if we can get it down to 50, Krista will do a shot. And but guys are unliking it. That's funny. Guys. Would yeah. Start. 44 watching and two likes. I don't know what's going on. These people want free entertainment for nothing for nothing and i think mark was like the only one who actually sent us a super chat as well and he's on now so we kind of have to give him that five dollars back i want a taco <laughs> we're gonna refund you there <laughs> <laughs> yeah let's let's get more dislikes than likes come on oh shit are people following suit i actually did hit dislike by the way Unless, I don't know, maybe it's just not updating on mine, but I oh, see like two likes up. and 41 watching, They're up which I find hard now. to believe, but. There's 24 likes now. May oh, I've only got two. Yeah, my, mine must be totally off. I don't know what's going on. I don't want to do anything or I'll leave or. Are you plugged in, Christo? What's that? Are you plugged in, your charger? Oh, uh, I got a bit left. Now. We might as well just call it a night. What's that? <laughs> we're down to 41 viewers. <laughs> Eugene's <Yeah>. like, no. <laughs> Fuck, we're, we might as well just have like a three-way here. Oh. We'll, we'll, we'll shut, you know shut up shop and just do a three-way. On that note, I am going to get another beverage. So you gentlemen take over. He needs it. Because <laughs> well, he's going to be the meat in the middle. No. <laughs> I don't. I don't know how to share it. Honestly, I've never shared a live, so usually we would just start it up and. Yeah, and that's all I do. Sometimes I advertise before it, just go on Facebook and whatnot. But what if? So, are you cracking open that Cuda Canage for me? Have you smelt it? No, I'm. I want to blind buy it, but nobody's selling. I think they're discontinuing it. They are. And that's why I'm getting nervous. I don't want to pay five hundred dollars for it. I'm sure you'll find it. It shows up in the groups quite often. All yeah. the good ones do. Good. Well, I've been looking. 
my splitter has a bottle, but his atomizer is fucked, and he wants to sell that to me. And I was like, no, I, I don't want it decanted. You know, look look who you're talking to, right? Guy needs the bottles. What's wrong with the atomizer? Uh, I've got a ton of atomizers I can help you with. <laughs> I think it's the stem. It it uh, it's loose at the top. But yeah, I, I don't think I'd be able to buy that either. No. I'd be irritated. No, I, I can't. So, but you have queer to Russi. I do. Yeah, you you, you mentioned that it was queer canage. Yeah, but unless you're a collector, which I am, <laughs> uh, I'll get it. I would say get it. But honestly, I much prefer queer to Russi. Well, if it if it holds a little bit of a candle near Cuil de Russie, then we have a good blind buy. I think you'd be happy with it. It's an excellent leather fragrance. Yeah, good. Well, that's good to hear. I'm enjoying my new uh, vetiver. All right. Vetiver? From Dior. Oh, yeah, right, right. Um, Remember I told you I was getting it? I got have you it. opened Toy Boy yet? No, still in the cellophane. You're, you're right. You're going to do a... a you, you know, you, yeah, you know me. It'll take me like two months, three months to fucking unbox it. Yeah, like you did with Queer Entendance and Black. It was getting a little bit frustrating, to be honest. Well, I know. I felt it in your... Uh... <laughs> like, what the fuck? Open this shit, man. What are you waiting for? Fucking guy. <laughs> I still haven't opened my office for men yet. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, off it really you haven't opened it no, i'm sure jeremy's like what the fuck i sent him a free bottle he doesn't do any advertising for he me probably hasn't even noticed man <laughs> probably hasn't even yeah. noticed uh, it's probably better for both of Dude, he's getting all those panties thrown at him he's like for, he you think he's thinking about robes yeah where's mark <laughs> why hasn't he reviewed my fragrance he's doing push up mark, mark with the K. <laughs> Welcome back. So to I did hear you off camera say that uh, queer canage was similar to queer de Rossi. And I'm <laughs> gonna call you out on it, man. Oh, 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 really? Oh yeah. Oh yeah, man. I'm gonna Calvary. call you out. Okay. I I find queer queer canage to be a lot more floral, and there's almost like a um almost like a hey, they're, they're both note floral. in it, huh? I don't see. I don't really. When I smell queer de Rossi, I don't get a lot of florals in it. When I smell queer canage, I do. That's and because I guess queer de Rossi is better blended and it's more abstract. <laughs> really, I, I don't think I would consider I, queer de Rossi more abstract. I I find I can pick out the florals in 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 uh, queer canage easier. I agree there, yeah. It's got the orange blossom that blasts you in the face right in the opening, and then the jasmine in the heart. Oh, you want Is that, that the CDR? Yeah. I love it. I love CDR, and I love Queer Canage, but I find them – I totally find them different enough to, to get you know, be green, wearable. Green floral leathers. Collection. Oh, that opening, eh? American Pie lights out. You should absolutely smoke a cigar. El Gonzo, I find Kanaj should be more of a potpourri incensed fragrance. Interesting. I never really thought of that. I don't know. I, I get like a dry hay kind of thing that I don't really get from Queer de Rossi in Kanaj. I oh. have them both. Like I've got a 250 mil bottle of Queer Canage, and I've got a 200 mil bottle of CDR, and I wear the both of them like crazy. All right, I'm guessing you don't want to sell that bottle then. <laughs> I am not looking to sell the bottle at the moment. We'll see yeah. how long COVID goes. Maybe I'm desperate, but um, I'm your man. No, I love it. I'm. I, I got it for don't pay your bills. Reason. Everything's forgivable now. What's that? You don't need to pay anything. Everything's forgivable. Yeah, you just don't. Yeah, I, yeah. I'll Mark send it to Mark, and Mark sends me an IOU. There, yeah, there you go. So Jonathan wants to know what you think about Lutons because a few months ago you said they weren't that great anymore. Well, he's saying that about both of us. American Pie lights out. But anyway, I just want to see what Eugene and Chris have to say 
about it all these months later after they said the line wasn't as good to them anymore. So that's about Luke. Uh, I think um, what you say? we're probably saying is the, the newest releases weren't as good. I don't From, think sorry, was that Luton's? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So I would need to go through and have a look at what's actually in production now. But yeah, I, I totally will back that up. Um, I think what they've discontinued or, you know, made non-export in the last couple years compared to what they're bringing out. It used to be, yeah. Yeah, and what they're, you know, they're now selling at Sephora. Yeah. They're, like, they've been at Sephora for a while, but it seems like now they are targeting the Sephora market. That's my opinion. What I see coming out compared to what they're making – non-export to me it totally shows that the house is kind of off the rails forgettable and i think i kind of stood up for the 100 mil bottles for a while and then when i actually held one in my hand and saw it i was like yeah you know what everyone who said these are kind of awkward and strangely laid out i agree i agree as well i don't think they're as attractive as the 50 ml no those are and you know what the only classic design i can think of that's better than the you know the um uh luton's 50 mil is like the luton's bell jar yeah like man they just had like the best the the bell jar to me is just like i i don't have any in my collection i want one just to have a bell jar yeah but i think those 50 different mils, than everyone else is doing yeah everyone's got like round or square bottles with magnetic caps Yep. Look at, you know, YSL, Chanel, Dior. Well, I think it's just kind of, and, and who does 75 mil EDTs, EDPs in a splash? No one. Yeah, That's nobody. so like 30s, you know, 20s, 30s. Carolina has a line. Their Parisian line is still splash. And that's just to give that's it that true. vintage feel. That's true. But the fragrances themselves are garbage, right? <laughs> They were at one time discontinued because they never sold properly. And now they're bringing them back in an exclusive format at three times the price. Fuck that business. Interesting. But yeah, no, I, 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 I love them. I love it. I don't know. The direction I see Luton's going in isn't what I'm used to. Right. And the last few new releases I've tried, which is a long time, they didn't interest me much. Um, uh, I just got Baptême du Fur. I don't know if you guys have smelled that one. I oh, know. Um, is that the ginger? It's it's a newer release. Okay, I I know I the name, but I don't remember what's in it. Wow, nice uh, nice comment there, uh, Eugene, that you highlighted, buddy. I thought you would like that. Which one? Oh, there. Oh, I'm gonna need fragrance to test tube. You. Hmm. I don't know what that means, but I will. <laughs> I know what that means. Well, <laughs> you're supposed to imagine what something. Come up with your best description that you could possibly think of. Of sorry, what was that? Just come up with something. Invent something. <laughs> Invent something. I think yeah. she's playing around with the beaver, trying to get some castorium. Possibly. Oh, okay. I see. I her see. or her kitty. I don't know. Maybe her kitty has a or something else. I don't know. Hey, wow. hey. <laughs> Crystal's like no. You guys are just <laughs> like man. Crystal's like <laughs> I'm we, we we have the same. <laughs> I'm out. Yeah, I didn't know that that Mark was as sleazy as Eugene. I would have just said, oh, oh he's filthier. No yeah. way. What? What? Super professional. <laughs> thirsty. <laughs> Who's thirsty? I didn't see that. Mark. <laughs> oh, oh, right there. Sorry, sorry. Oh my. Um, so Mark, what have you been wearing recently the last couple weeks, couple months? There's you know, I don't know, you're 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 a little bit further north than i am so you're and i know my a friend of mine 
went to college where you are and man he had wild weather there like i remember going up to visit him and again like eugene said you're only about four hours from where we are and it was snowing at the end of august yeah it was snowing yesterday actually wow oh okay so around here you'll get that but like i remember going up when he started college and we you know i went up with him and a couple friends and it was snowing in like the last weekend of august i was like i've never seen snow in august in my life right it was just so bizarre it snowed here last weekend heavily like i really didn't didn't get any snow here i I can can build snow like snowmen here if you want me to like i have that much snow here really yeah, the roads There's have been not a drop, not a drop, not a flake of snow in Hamilton for a month. Oh yeah, my whole yard's covered. Mark, do wow. you have chains on your tires? Oh, sorry, you have chains on your tires? No, no, we just get snow tires. Some people do have chains. Studs really? Do. Some people put studs on their tires here. Man, they're illegal down here. I didn't know you still had those there. No, yep. I guess it must be be a municipal thing, but. We're, yeah, we're north, man. People drive around with their snowmobiles on the streets. <laughs> so what am I wearing? I'm yeah, what's been place. in your rotation? I'm all over the place right now just because of the weather. We are, we're getting, you know, like spring, winter type of uh, feel right now. You get uh, some days you get rain and it's like plus five, plus ten. And then the other day you get snow. So um, you get a little mixture of everything. And you know me, I'm designer, niche, indie, whatever. Uh, so I've been wearing a lot of the darker stuff when I want to. So like Lamal, like Lamal, that's the darkest one I own. Uh, <laughs> no, I've uh, I've tried out. Uh, I bought a bunch of Dior's. I guess I don't know if Eugene uh, made me want to buy a bunch of Dior's. So I've tried out the new Vetiver or new Vetiver, the ultra rare Vetiver. Finally got uh, my hand on that. Um, I tried. Uh, I got Patchouli uh, Imperial. So I got that. Um, and I'm. I'm Delving into some of my freshies now, a little bit, bit by bit. But, uh, yeah, a lot of the stuff I'm trying out is really just mostly for the channel. Like Grand Soir, um, great scent. I uh, can't wait to talk about it, but it's for the channel. Um, you know, I wore Beach Hut Man the other day from Amouage, again, for the channel. So a lot of stuff for the channel, to be quite honest. The odd. Yeah. I've never yeah. tried Beach Hut. I think I just lost lost touch with amouage after sunshine and since then so the only place yeah. you could really test amouage in toronto niche essence closed down soon after like closed down their brick and mortar that was the yeah. only place that you could really test amouages and i find the house to be kind of all over the place so they're a bit dangerous for me to to go in at retail price yeah um, they're um, they've changed their creative direction. Um, mm-hmm. like, uh, whole one eighty from like way back, right? right? The memoirs, the interludes, the Jubia, mm-hmm. the epics. Those were mm-hmm. all dark. Uh, you know, using the silver frankincense. Then they went. I don't know if they're trying to go safer or trying to uh, attract a certain demographic, which I'm assuming they are because they're going more uh, with florals. Um, you know, this watercolor thing like you know, Chanel, Dior, all these privés. Um, but I'm glad just putting their own twist on like using Immortel, right? It's not really a watercolor. It's more of a darker uh, floral, but at the same time, it's very unique. Um, so Sunshine Man obviously utilizes Immortel. Um, they have Portrayal that kind of smells like Fahrenheit, high end mm-hmm. Fahrenheit. Actually, I've smelt that. Come you know that? I've not heard of that. Yeah, it's it's so crazy. Like I smelled it, I was like Fahrenheit, like immediately. Hmm. Uh, so, oh, are it, they going like the inspirational route, like a lot of other brands now, or is that is that the only thing you found inspired, or did you find some of the other Amouage to be inspired by other things as well? Um. No, I felt that Amouage is was a brand that really did do their own thing. Um, I felt that. But were you surprised when you smelt poor trail to, to be familiar, uh, yes. similar to Fahrenheit? Yes, because I'm used to, I'm wash, smelling and I'm wash and going, oh, that's different or that's unique. They're using this note with this note and it actually works or it doesn't, right? For the right person or wrong. Right. Person, depending. Um, so yeah, smelling that, I was like, hmm, 
But it was well done. It's tastefully done. Um, right. But it's just another example of a niche brand dummying down and going mainstream, right? That's where the industry's going, buddy. You know this. All these high-end niche brands are just kind of watering down into designer realm. Like people are like asking in, in 2005 and 2007 when Dior Preve and Chanel exclusives came out, the whole purpose was to compete with niche. And now yeah. Dior exclusives are trash. They're like designer level. They're 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 lower than what Dior designer level was in the eighties and nineties. <laughs> Look at Christo. He's just. He's I'm just. La- yeah, it's true. It's just. It's all true. It's all true. Yep. It's dubbing down. You um, guys so, think I'm yeah. fucking lying, man? But oh, no, I. I before you. Totally before you I, know, there's going to be a, a Dior Privé exclusive ultra niche. Well, that's what I was talking about in one of my lives. And they're going to be 700 bucks a bottle, okay? That's where they're going is because now it's starting to saturate the market in the two, three 300, 400 market. Where else are they going to go? Uh, there's nothing. Well, nothing. I don't mean nothing, but there are some brands that are five, six, seven. But that's next. That is going to be the Z, uh, Zial Chanel's are going to have like this – extra line now um that will be their actual niche line um that's where i think that's going to be going like their designer lines are actually really meeting up price wise to and of course the juice wise they're meeting up so i think i think that's really good insight i couldn't have said it better um i think it is so true like indie niche is uh maybe not indie as much but let's say niche designer exclusives they're kind of going down the curve and then they're trying to make these more exclusive you know parfums oils whatever whatever to be their high end yeah Yeah, that's i think that's very well said i I really agree with that you know i i don't remember who it was i was texting with someone even saying and eugene's gonna hate me for this but i think even the last few chanel's have been pretty shit I disagree, man. The last few <laughs> Chanel exclusives. You man, would. 1957, it's nice, but man, I wouldn't buy that if it was 500 bucks. I think you if need it to was buy it on skin and take it for number. a test drive a couple of times. You might change your mind. It just was, I don't know. Like the first time I smelled number 22 as an EDT, probably in about 2011, it just blew me away. Like I couldn't even fathom it and then 57 it's like it's nice and i got a little sample but when i've tried it it's like man i don't think this is on par with what chanel should be releasing yeah i don't know that's me i don't know maybe i'm just being cynical I think it's but great. i think it's 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 brilliantly crafted i think it's 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 interesting it's unique there's nothing else like it out there for must really? yeah <laughs> crystal <laughs> so i don't know man eugene, I was, is that, is that that's nice. what's, what's that, that? Is, is that eugene's brand is it chanel like if everything else would go away you would pick chanel as your brand uh, i think he's got her mess and mall in front of them or very really? close to but pretty damn close i don't know man it's it all like i love the the old girlons like the heritage of girlons like the girlon does the the Guerlain exclusives they don't they don't rank as high as Chanel or I don't even know if I'd rank them as high as Hermes like the arts and materials but you know the Parisians some of the Parisians are pretty good um I don't I, I guess Chanel exclusives to me are 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 gold standard as far as perfume goes there's nothing else that can even come close to them in my experience. As he cashes his check. Yeah. I'm joking. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Olivier sending me 5G every time I say the word you, Chanel. Eugene is bought. <laughs> no, you know what? Here I'm going to be it. honest. I, I didn't like Boy. I just didn't like Boy. I've tried it over and over, and I just don't like it. I don't see the craftsmanship to be there. Um, quality and notes, perhaps, but I just. I don't like it, and I find it kind of messy in the dry down. Wow, wow, wow! That's I, I, I don't know. Boy, just I've tried it 
so many times. I've tried to like it. Um, I know it's kind of like a, a classic um, fougere, I believe it is. Yeah. yeah. Um, and I just, I found it to be too sweet. I, mm. I don't know. It didn't do it for me. And then 1957. I don't know. Maybe yeah. it comes off too feminine. Is it because it's too femme? No, I don't like, think I so. A lot I of find... guys saying it's too feminine. A lot of women saying it's too masculine. Um, I no, I I find it's got a lot stuff. of vanilla, and I know you don't like vanilla, but I love Twenty Two, and I find Twenty Two to be a lot more feminine than Boy, in my yeah. opinion. But the vanilla is also drier. Like boys, kind of it's 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 more of a wet fragrance, wet sweet. Hmm. Where where twenty two is drier. It's also got vanilla, but it's a dry, dry vanilla. Hmm. I don't know. I've just I've tried boy over and over. I've taken samples. I've worn it. It just never compelled me. Um, you know, there there's enough great stuff from Chanel. I've got a good bit and there's still a good bit that I really need to pick up, but boy is very far down the, uh, the line for me, in my opinion. Yeah. Mm. Mark, have you tried boy? No. It's nope. what Mark? would you describe it as like kind of a, a barber shoppy, but it's got a lot of sweetness in it. Yeah, it's missing a lot of the aspects of the classic fougere, like the um, the clove and the leather, and it's replaced by it's more of a floral accord in the heart, mm -hmm. rose and geranium, right? Mm -hmm. And it's got it dries down to kind of that again pastelly, waxy, cosmetic -y vibe that you'll find in a lot of Chanel's. I find it very deep, and you know, it's not the most it's not challenging at all it's actually very simple no but it's well, it that's where i find the beauty is in in just its subtlety it's just easy to wear and and throughout the day i was like man this is i don't know i love it correct me if i'm wrong and you can because you have way more experience than i do uh, with their exclusive line but i feel like chanel is um like you said the word challenging um i wouldn't put Chanel in that category at all. With I don't find them challenging at all. Um, they're very... Maybe uh, queer to Roussy to an, uh, like an average nose. It might be a little bit challenging. Sycamore, I guess, uh, would be another one. Um, I don't know if it's not it would be challenging. You know, okay, I, I think I'm, I'm going to say that, yeah, I think if, especially if you come in as, like, let's say an entry-level niche enthusiast that is male some dude who's owned nothing except one million and a decant of um, tobacco vini yeah. you're probably <laughs> gonna find the lays exclusives to be very feminine very yeah. strange or very classic yeah i i think so they, they don't have in from that mentality they 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 play it they play it safe, which is good for for sales. Uh, very, uh, I wouldn't say they have genders. Uh, honestly, they're very. Um, I feel they're thin. Uh, the quality is there; you can smell it. Uh, a lot of them, to me, are more femme because they use a lot of the florals, and that's where Ziada is kind of going with their exclusives. They're using a lot of these florals, which is is a good thing. Um, I'm discovering florals a lot uh, recently, but I just, I don't know, like, I only own Sycamore, Cuir de Russie, Bois des Ailes uh, from the Chanel exclusive line. That's it. Um, I really don't gravitate. When they release a new one, I, and I don't know when's the last time they released a new one. And that's how much I'm, I don't have my finger. 1957 was the last one. Yeah. And They're releasing a new one later this year, if it ever I do know that. that. So it's very, I, I guess it feels, I don't know, to me it feels very classic, I guess. Uh, it's very traditional rich. French perfume. It's fine French perfume. It's yeah. not meant to compete with Amouage um, and like, I don't even think it competes with Dior in, in boldness, especially with Dior Prive. Um, I think as far as. They're more, they're more along the lines of Hermescence. That's what I was going to say. It's soft and subtle, but like you can't beat the craftsmanship. And the depth. Well, I you think, know, Mark, did you say you had 
Was it queer to receive Bois de Eel and Sycamore? Correct. Okay. I think as well, I don't know how calculated this was on your behalf, but I think those are probably three of the more masculines from yeah. that line. Oh, and I agree. Down. I think a lot of the stuff is very, uh, very unisex. Yeah. With a few exceptions that'll go a little bit masculine, a little bit feminine. I find beige to be quite feminine, but I really like it. I, I really agree. Like it. Beige it's is on the femme side. It's all white florals and honey. Yeah, but I think the three that you mentioned there, and I own, I don't own Sycamore, but I really wanted a bottle when they transitioned to EDPs. Um, right. I have a bottle of... Um, 1932? And I have a bottle of Quarter C, and I find them to be just amazing. But they're, they're like, amazing. Yeah. You still have yeah. 1932? Oh, baby, I love 1932. <laughs> <It's> <laughs> See, like, that's all floral. <laughs> Look yeah, at it. Is, it is. It is. It's all floral, totally right? But it's very floral, and I think Mark kind of mentioned this. It's very floral and kind of like more of a, a modern, um, uh, you know, niche sense so when you look at a lot of these classic chanel's whether classic meaning from you know 20 years ago or classic being from 100 years ago a lot of them on par with um niche and indie today they're very very unisex can't remember what i think if it was chanel that mark said that about but he said it about something, but yeah, I think like a lot of the Chanel, or maybe it was a comment, I don't remember, but yeah, it's like if you take Chanel A's exclusives and isolate a couple here and there, they're pretty much unisex by today's niche yep. standards. Yeah, that's that's how I feel about the brand. Um, yeah, yeah, okay, so yeah, that's it's very true. Like, I think there's a few exceptions here and there, but when you look at like 1932, Rue Campbell, um, you know, what else is in there? A Gardini is a bit feminine. Yeah, Jersey. Nice. Jersey's kind of femme. See, I, I'd almost say Jersey's a little more unisex, in my opinion, because it's basically just like lavender and vanilla. I'm yeah. just not a Must and vanilla. Fan. It's what a very it? simple fragrance, but it's, it's absolutely gorgeous. Like, it's just so beautiful. It's like watching a sunset, right? Watching the sunset isn't exciting, but it's it's beautiful. Yeah, you know? that's the only way I can describe when I wear Chanel. You're so romantic. I don't feel like I'm going down a fucking roller coaster. That's okay. what I want. Give me the yeah, damn roller coaster. Go wear on wash. Give me give me my leather ouds. <laughs> no, man. Like, there's a time and place for leather oud, but then you know, every day there's also a moment for <laughs> mesia <laughs> where you just want to feel sophisticated. But I kind of feel like the industry is going towards what Chanel has been doing for years. So they may be well ahead of the curve. Well, there you I go. I feel like it, your auto was like, huh, or Privé line, I don't know. I feel like we should be copying what Chanel's doing. And Amouage is going a little more floral, a little more green, uh, a little more transparent. So maybe that's where the industry is going, uh, is, is the florals. Um, and Chanel may have had it right for... 10 20 plus years now that they're releasing these previs you never know maybe but these newest your previs they don't have the depth as the chanel exclusives i can't say much because i haven't tried a lot of them but they're i'll back him up on that for sure like yeah. no question 100 even, even the originals didn't have you know they were bold and and they were they were they were more exciting than than chanel's but they didn't have yeah. If you're looking for craftsmanship and and you know just the beauty, they didn't have that. Oh, beauty's in the eye of the beholder. There's some fantastic Dior Preves, but yeah, I just don't think. Like I, I don't even know. I'd have to pull up Fragrantica or base notes to actually um, go through and see what's still in production. And even then, and that's probably controversial, but. Yeah, what Dior's putting out in their Preve line is just really not on par from what used to be in their Preve line, which is kind of like, you know, what we started getting into this with the, the Lutons thing, I think. Yeah. Um, 
there's some good stuff, maybe some good stuff that's carrying over, some decent stuff that's being put out, but, you know, like Queer Canage, they didn't get Queer Canage at the um, Saks in Toronto. What is it, like a year and a half or two years ago now? Maybe not quite two years, but they're like, yeah, we never got bottles of uh, Queer Canage. Hey, Crystal, can you adjust your phone a little bit? Just pick it up. The sound We're losing your sound, your mic. Man, I, I'm like literally just like turning my phone slightly. It shouldn't back on you. Christo sounds like he's in like a tin can or something. Man, I didn't even touch anything. <laughs> like, don't get me wrong. I love the original Dior Preves, a lot of them. Leather Oud, uh, Oud Isfahan, Old Noir. But they, to me, like when I think of them, I think obnoxious loud, arrogant, boisterous, you know, seeking attention. See, I, I see it as taking a, um, I don't know, they're uh, taking a chance. Uh, There's nothing doing. wrong with that. Like, that's not, I, I from, that. you know, I'm not judging them that way. That's just what I see Yeah. in a lot of the Chanel's. Like, even Queer to Rue one of their better ones, is it's, it, it's a statement maker, but it's subtle. It comes and it goes and it plays yep. peekaboo and, you know, it's still there 11 or 12 hours later, but it's not screaming for attention the way, let's say, Leather Oud is. Right. You know what I mean? You know, maybe somebody wants that boisterous, loud, obnoxious scent. For me, I much prefer the subtlety. But okay, but I think maybe like Ud Ispahan. When when was that released? I don't know. Marks on the quick let's say two thousand and ten ish. Yeah, and then like you know, malls coming out with the Middle Eastern sense now, and everybody's like, "Oh my god, this stuff is amazing!" It's like, dude, Dior did this ten years ago. I don't know. That's kind of what I feel like. Hmm. Uh, Louton's is uh, sorry, uh, mall. You know the moon and the night and blah, blah, blah. Like, okay, maybe they're higher quality. Maybe they're, you know, higher end, whatever. But, you know, Dior did that a decade before Mall even thought about yeah. doing good. And then Mall's getting praised for it. Just look at Zior Um lineup. How different that was when they released that. Zior Um, um the original. Just look at the original. Um, how that was different from everything else in the designer game. I really loved that release. Still do um, that original release, and even their the autumn sport was at, at least to me. I felt was really well done with the ginger um, DHI. I, I know Eugene's not a big fan of that line, but um, of which? I felt the 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 autumn line. I love the um, autumn man. When it, when it first came out, uh, DH uh, um, even the cologne the autumn cologne. Uh, with the really long bottle, I have the old one. Not the oh one yeah, right. yeah, the old one twenty five. Yeah, no, yeah. I'm a huge fan of Dior Homme line. Yeah, I, that line them, was, I love them. I felt like that brought Dior not to Chanel's level, but number two. I felt, you know, Hermes is up there too because yeah. of Eleanor, by the way. Um, but I feel like those are the three brands for me. That was Chanel, Dior, Hermes, and that's your designer. You know, I don't think anybody else is touching those. Well, I think Dior with Dior Homme and a few of the subsequent versions of it, Chanel did nothing. Chanel couldn't compete with that. No. When Dior Homme came out, Chanel was, yeah, exactly. they were still flogging, you know. Allure. Like, yeah. Oh. And, you know, like there's, there's you know, Allure Homme Sport, um, uh, Edition Blanche, which are both really good, but, you know, the essential primary release of Allure Home, I don't like, to be honest. And I think Dior Home just, you know, and they're, they're different fragrances. They're totally different fragrances, but Dior Home just devastates Chanel's Allure. Well, the Allure line is garbage. It's 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 duty-free garbage. And I always thought... I, thought, <laughs> I, I don't that. mind, but okay. When, I think if you compare the original Allure to the original Dior Home, and then you compare subsequent flankers. Um, I think 
your own stands up way better. Yeah. I don't think when you look at, you know, Dior, uh, sorry, Dior own sport versus um, Allure own sport. And, you know, you kind of go there. They're kind of back and forth. You know, I'll kind of argue for either or, but the original Dior own versus the original Allure own, Dior destroyed yeah. them. Like, just yeah. blew them out of the water. Yeah. And it wasn't until Blah came in that I like, I still like, but I found it kind of boring. And, you know, today when I smell, let's say, there he is. He's got found it. it. There's a cologne. Yeah. Um, I think Chanel's only, as far as I can recall, their only, you know, standalone male fragrance after Allure Home oh, yeah. is Blah. And when you kind of look how Blah stands now, it's not anything compared to even Dior Home. And Dior Home destroyed Allure. I don't know. That's my opinion. right, but but the, when when Blue came out, it changed the face. It changed it the did. face of designers. It was groundbreaking. <laughs> it was trailblazing. It did, but it gave way to like you know, Invictus and Jeremy. All right, <laughs> you know what I mean. Like absolutely, that's you're what, you're Blue absolutely Chanel gave right. Sauvage and Jeremy and Invictus and Office. But like Blue, that's what it gave us. I, I agree that Dior Homme is that much of a better fragrance, but I think Blue had more of an impact. If you look oh, it at did, it did, but that doesn't mean it was good. I, I'm, know, not I saying it, I'm not saying it's good or better, but I'm saying it had more of an impact on the market than Dior Homme did. Sure, Dior Homme had a lot of other brands copying it, but not nearly as much as, as the Blue brands coming out now. Yeah, I yeah. agree. I agree, but I, mean, I still think I've always said Dior Home feels more like a Chanel than it does a Dior. Hundred percent, just because it's so powdery and 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 unlike anything Dior's ever created. Mm -hmm. I, I I feel like this is their. I thought this was Christian Dior's reply to Chanel that we're in the game now. You better keep an eye on us. We're not yeah. going to be doing, even though they were doing Fahrenheit flankers and stuff like that, but we're serious now and we're coming for the throne. Um, unfortunately, after a while, it just fell off somehow. Something with the Privé line, they started playing around with that. And uh, yeah, I, I really felt like when I first started YouTube, I felt like Dior was going for the throne for Chanel. I felt like they were releasing better stuff. Honestly, they are really bolder stuff. It, especially when you go from a masculine point of view. Um, you know, Dior was doing like what? What, what came before um, Allure? What was the last masculine before Allure? Like Jules? It was the Allure for Chanel. For for Chanel. Before before Allure, what was the last Ego East. standalone masculine? Ego East. Platinum Egoist, Egoist, yeah. Platinum okay. right? 93? Yeah, Platinum. that was in the early 90s. 93 with Platinum and Egoist came in. And the lure came 2000-ish? 99, I think. 99 for the original. Because before, um, before DRM, yeah, they, to be fair, okay, they had Fahrenheit, which was obviously groundbreaking, but, you know, I know higher fits in there somewhere. I still have a soft spot for higher, but I really don't think it's as great as I used to. Um, and again, I don't really know where, what fits in between. Fuck, I don't even count those as releases. I don't think I ever even <laughs> smell higher. It's like they were out for a year or two and then what, discontinued? How long right. were they still in production? Dune. Look at Dune. Man, Dune, Dune. is amazing. You can't yeah, go really into the best any... Big sense ever made. Right, but you can't go into any Dior counter and, and, and get a, sand, no. a tester of Dune or higher. In North America, because nobody wants it. I feel like those... I don't know. I feel like mainstream... Man, Dune, is, Dune is legendary. Dune is legendary around the world. It's just... It's never really been sold or marketed or released in north america but dune seriously dune's huge man like i have so many people contact me about my deep my dune video 
from like nine years ago. Yeah. Oh, there is that Jules? Yep. Cool. I've never actually seen a model of that. That's the new the newest one, of course, yeah. I don't even know where my uh Dune is. Christo, can you adjust your mic a little bit? I I have a phone. I don't have a mic. It just that somebody says you sound like Darth Vader. Man, I, I don't know, man. I, I don't know what to say. There's nothing I can do. It's a, it's a so phone. hang on, hang on. So Duncan Spake, Duncan Spake says so many indie houses blowing Chanel and Dior off the map in terms of quality and uniqueness. And I might agree with you in the uniqueness part, but I want to know which ones are, are, are doing it in the quality department. Yeah, I, I'm, I kind I'm of curious, and I highly too. doubt that. I've smelt a lot of weird niche in the last couple months, and it was all just like, I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. I I don't know. Chanel is so polished, and that that's probably the word you would utilize to me instead of quality is I feel like they're polished and that's where like this Ziad online. Ooh, they're the Mercedes Benz of luxury cars, right? They're a luxury car. That's, that's why you buy a Chanel um, to be quite honest. Um, do I think an indie house can come up with that type of quality? Yeah, of course they can, but um, I don't know. I haven't smelt one. It, again, the track record speaks for itself. I don't know. Um, as far as uniqueness, yeah, it's not even a question. Uh, I don't think Chanel is unique at all, to be quite honest. That's They don't take any chances. They are very safe. Um, they're very mainstream. Um, yeah, I agree. With X. Um, they're high-end. You can smell that, that they're high-end, at least most of their releases. and uh, But they don't take any chances. And, and that's probably a good thing for business. Um, but I like, again, maybe that's why the lack of myself purchasing Chanel's is that I like brands that go off the wall, um, try something new. Um, like this blue stuff does not, you know, blue de Chanel, like releasing a EDT, EDP parfum. Come on now. Really? Um, that's well, everybody's <laughs> doing that. That's the market trend today. Well, you that's money unless you do, which brand isn't doing that. I don't know. It feels like only Sauvage and Blur is getting that treatment. All three, right? Because they're, yeah. they're kind of cows. Well, everybody's like, even look at all the top 10 sellers, 1 million. How many versions of 1 million are there? Or Invictus or even uh, Dolce Gabbana, the one. But I don't, it, I don't it, keep up to date. I honestly don't know, but I know there's a lot of these things around. You go in and I get confused. When I see the one million counter, I was like, what? Which when one's which? Eh? <laughs> hey? You're like, which one's which? Yeah, like <laughs> what? how crazy. many Lamals are there, right? How many hey. uh, Lanu eat the Loams? And like, when was YSLY launched? What, two years ago? Three years yeah, ago? Yeah, how yeah, many flankers yeah. are there? Yeah. Well, I, I don't know. Like Chanel and Zia, they don't release that much. Uh, especially in Chanel's side. Um, like Blue came out in 2010 and there's only three versions. So yeah. in 10 years, they've come out with three. Which is their only masculines that they've released in those years, which is fucking terrible for me. I hate Blue the Chanel. I'm, I'm, it well, you can replace well, Blue the Chanel with any Blue fragrance and I would agree with you. I'm not interested in They They killed my interest in the brand. Um, honestly, I, I wish they would do something else. By the way, did you uh, sniff out the new 1 million Eugene yet? <laughs> I don't even know which one new 1 million you're talking about. <laughs> All right. Well, while it's just me and you, what's your best, best spring best. scent right now? Huh? What's, what's your spring scent? What I spray tonight? What am I wearing right now? No, 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 your your top spring scent for you. Top spring scent number one. My first day of spring scent is usually Lise Mediterranee from Frederick Mall. Now that's your spring scent. That's my first day of spring, and then I'll probably wear it once or twice for the rest of the year. 
<laughs> really? That's it. Yeah. Well, yeah, you know, so much a rotation like this, like you, you know, you certainly know, you probably can get one wearing in per year. Yeah, that's right. you know, it's crazy. I see these top ten spring videos, and the guy will put like, I don't know, he's got a million fragrances, and he's going to say, yeah, I'm going to wear this like twenty times, and in in three months, meanwhile, you know, he's got fifteen hundred bottles behind him. No Insane. Deal. How many times can you wear fragrance in a year, Mark? Well, I bet you you've gone years without wearing, you know. A, oh yeah, a half of them. One hundred percent. There's some in here that I've, yeah, I haven't touched since I've reviewed them. Right, yeah. I've reviewed them like a Versace Dylan Blue. Like I just reviewed it. Come, come, knock on my door twenty years from now and tell me how many times I've worn it in the yeah. last twenty years. And when I spray it, all you're gonna smell is perfumers alcohol, right? Exactly, or dust. Yeah. Um, but um, no, I have. Yeah, those top 20 lists or top 10 lists, they're very, you know, how many times does someone actually wear them? Um, how much of a number, like saying how many compliments you get and how, how many times you wear it. And then the bottle's like practically full. Yeah. Um, you know, don't don't make it up. Like I'm, I make top 20 lists, but those are, you know, those are the ones that I look forward to. Yeah. And I hope that people watch my videos and go, that's his favorites right now that he would want to wear or likes to wear. Um, given I'm not saying, hey, buddy, I've worn this 50 times in spring. Doesn't make any sense because I'm not a signature scent type of guy. That's a really good point to make because that's kind of how I approach seasonal lists now. And I think, Eugene, for the most part, we've done – um seasonal lists in tandem i don't know if you've done many by yourself or if i've done many by myself but it's like this is what i'm excited about to wear yeah for this upcoming spring or it, it, this is what say, i wore a lot in this past winter yeah but you may say like i just got this bottle so i'm gonna wear it i'm gonna wear it a lot honestly yeah and i'm excited about this release that i just purchased um like zial's vetiver here's a you know it's on my list um, mm -hmm. number, I think I put it at number 18. I'm, I'm excited about it. Um, I don't think it's the best vet ever, ever made. So I'm not going to overhype it or anything mm -hmm. like that. I'm just going to say this is new to my stable. Everybody yeah. talks about vetiver and how much it's a unicorn. And I feel like eh, maybe Sycamore is a little better. Maybe. But I'm excited to try it out. I think spring's the best season for it. Vetiver is a great note for spring. And that's what I'll say. Um, pretty much. I'm not going to say, hey, you know, I got 20 compliments from this. I'm going to wear it 50 times. That's BS. Come on. I'm not a salesman. <laughs> I'm I'm certain if you were to go to Marks for Grant and see what he worn last year, like number one probably has less than 10 wearings, right? And the same can go for you and for me. In the first place, how many wearings would you have? I'm going to say mine's been... A lot just because of again I don't want to get into it because it's boring but just for work I do wear about four or five things a lot yeah, yeah. that makes sense um, yeah it's same with me like the rotation some years are it's very broad I might get you know maybe a hundred 150 200 out of one fragrance that I, no, no 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 in total right on, on bottles Right. Okay. Like 200 bottles would be worn during 365 days. We'll say. Right. I'm just spitballing. That would be a broad year, but there might be a year that I'm just wearing 50 bottles, and that my my rotation is is very low. Um, you know, I might wear a fragrance once, and that's it. Hit it and quit it. Right. Um. So, but there's, you know, I'm a fragrance reviewer, so I wear fragrances to test out. Um. And really, a lot of shitty fragrances, to be quite honest, just for the channel. But that's the way I review. Um, my channel is kind of different, but I don't buy a whole bunch of stuff that I absolutely love. I buy in bulk. I'm a collector. Um, and I'm all over the place. So, you know, things like Le Mal, yeah, I might have a really good year one year that I, I just can't stop wearing it. It's one of my favorite designers of all time. It's no secret. Some years it may get 15, 20 wearings, which is pretty high number, honestly. Um, again, I'm not. I'm just spitballing. This is not real numbers. Um, and then some years I might wear it three, four times, and you won't see it in a top twenty list on 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 my channel, just because I really don't want to wear them all. I don't want to wear lavender or vanilla, right? 
Yeah, I think I think you hit it really well. Like, um, I've I've proclaimed Narciso for him EDT as the closest I've kind of been to a signature scent, and I've worn it maybe ten times in the last half decade. But I still love it, and it's it's really special to me. But I just don't wear it much anymore. And I think as well, it's kind of part of that is that because it's special. I don't just want to wear it every single day and get bored with it. I like wearing it now and again and getting that nuance and going like, ah, I like that kind of thing. But that's my yeah. opinion. I don't know. I, I, I wear really safe, bland perfume now, you know, from where I'm working and being in college and being in post-secondary, you know, worrying about people complaining about, you know, perfume in the workplace, perfume in the, you know, um, you know, in an educational institution, I kind of worry about that. And it's like, I'd love to go somewhere and work somewhere that I can just wear crazy, ridiculous perfume what I want every day. Like working from home. There, there you go. Sure, sure. You know what? I forgot to wear perfume yesterday and I was chastised by a member of the FragCom. Uh, you, you forgot to wear perfume? How I did. did. That happen? I, I forgot what day it was, man. I, I was like, today was like, what, Saturday the 20. Oh, yeah. Yesterday 23rd? was Sunday. I, yeah. I, I was like, man, that. I didn't even know what day it was. I didn't know what the date was. I didn't wear perfume. <laughs> I, thought, I thought maybe you went to work or something without bringing. No, no, no. I sat at that home in my dirty weird, boxer man. shorts watching Better Call Saul and scratching myself <laughs> and eating pretzels and pate. And I didn't know yeah. what. Yeah, just like completely disconnected from reality. So there's a new e uh, YSL YO fresh coming out. Pass. <laughs> yeah, not looking no breakdown or anything. Just pass. there's a new Aqua de Geo coming out. Pass. <laughs> Keep going. <laughs> No, and it's true. If I, I smell it, I probably won't like it just by you saying the name of it. <laughs> well, I, I might buy it. Just oh, or yes. something. To what? To smash it? Yeah, you know, have some fun. That's a new thing, eh? Did you see his last video? I'm like he's holding EDG and was it Savage or Versus? I was like, who's this guy? Oh, <laughs> Ah, uh, we're just having a little bit of fun. Nobody should take it too serious. Oh, was someone getting grumpy there? I didn't see that. Huh? How do you spread pate on a pretzel? Oh. Dip it, man. Dip that shit. Dip, dip. Where, where are you see? Are you making this up or am I just missing this stuff? Which? The pate? Yeah. Oh, oh there. Yeah, the I'm just getting there. it a little bit late. <laughs> Yeah, man. Dips, dip a pretzel on that pate. Dip, dip. <laughs> Love that dip. Man, I got some Polish pickles. I got some cold cuts. Man, I'm just wa sitting back and waiting for the apocalypse. Man, man, I cooked a chili on the weekend, and it was so f fucking spicy. Oh, the in when you did the Instagram. Yeah. Montage. Really? It, yeah, and, my, and my asshole's been on fire ever since, man. <laughs> I gotta go sit in the tub and chill out, like just pour ice in there. I swear, I what feel like about? I've never <laughs> felt this in my. It's the first time I cook chili. I'm like, all right, I'm gonna do something with the kids, and we're gonna, you know, we're all gonna do something. We're gonna put the devices away and all the distractions, and we're gonna, we're gonna have, you know, like. A fun time and we 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 got all the stuff together for this chili and i i guess i must have gone overboard with the spices with the cumin and the chili pepper and all that stuff man but <laughs> insane vladimir says it's happening <laughs> <laughs> no. that's the oh, martel man. that's eugenius that's not me eh so i'm Good not taking fire. responsibility for whatever happens after this 
after whatever mm-hmm. happens after the two hour and 14 minute mark, I refuse to take responsibility. <laughs> so that's only going back 19 seconds now, man. Yeah. That's right. Dave R. I don't think it's Dave or, but Dave R. Mark, what's your favorite barbershop son? Invasion oh. Barbad. That's a good one. Reeve Ghosh. That's another one. Derby. Yep. Keep going. Savage. Fuck that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, too much cayenne pepper. Possibly. I put a lot of damn spices in there. Never again. I and felt like I ate a, like a, a bushel of patchouli and it just <laughs> cleansed me out. Oh, you know how patchouli is very scratchy and, and, and abrasive? It's like it took a scouring pad and swallowed a, like a, a six pack of scouring pads. I'll, I'll take your word, man. I don't know. <laughs> I lived in Southeast Asia, man. I, I used to eat Thai red chilies and Thai green chilies like like nothing, man. I, I, I've had it all run through me. So Atherealis says people at work have complained about my perfume and they have been fired since. I, so I does he know, know which business? perfumes they were, Galen? Yeah, I'd love to know which perfumes they were. Yeah, and is he just the boss? Is like you complain about my perfume, you're fired. I, I assume so. That that's pretty like that's that's heavy handed, man. That's like, yeah. Who would have knew, Galen? Eh? Yeah. Like he looks like, like a really nice, easygoing, mellow guy. No He's way. kidding, of course. Well, I can't you wait to from there. Frank Pong, Vladimir says. Oh, wow. Maybe I'm Tito. Yosip Bros. Oh, Tito, Yosip Bros. Yeah, man. He, he, puts, he puts Trump to shame, doesn't he? I, I'm not getting political, man. I'm not getting too political on this. So let me put this out. What For you two gentlemen, what's on your to-buy list, to-try list? I don't have a whole lot, to be honest. I'm quite content. Um, I'll be happy if I can pick up the, the two new Guerlains, Ideal and Patchouli Ardent. And the two new Chanel's that are due out this year, Paris Edinburgh, which is part of the Lazo and mm-hmm. the new exclusive. Do we know much about the exclusive? All I know it's called is Le Leo because okay. um, Gabrielle Chanel was a Leo. That was her birth sign. Oh, right. Okay. Notes, though, we don't know much. I, I don't either. know anything. Other, I'd really like to pick up tea for two, and Ooh. there's another lardisan, a zing. Yeah, I can't, I the can't really. Bottle. My yeah, talk to this guy. He's he's it's an early bottle. Ambassador I would love to get two. them, but I'm not sh- like, I don't know, I don't know. You would no seriously. I think you would really like tea for two. Um, it's just it's spice. It's so much spice and. Yeah, tea. Tea for two is excellent. It's one of the darker tea based scents. Um, it has some depth to it um, from La Cizan. While you're getting that, might as well get Zing too, by the way. I believe he has Zing. I could be wrong, but I, I, believe, believe. I know I tried it with Eugene. I don't remember if it was his bottle or. I don't have Zing. You don't? don't so you I would recommend. Okay. But I tried it a couple of weeks ago and I thought it was really good. Yeah. Like a good. really. Simple. I wouldn't call it a challenging musk leather, but no. But it's it's a good. I would say a good a nice starter, chain though, for change. Yeah. All right, guys. Answer Ava's question. Your top three favorite scents on a woman. I didn't even see that. Where's that? It's on the screen, and she oh. wants to be elaborate. Wow. All caps, eh? And she wants you to come again. <laughs> <laughs> Again? 
<laughs> you know these younger women, eh? Yeah. Is that who that channels is? I didn't even realize. Yes, no. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. I, I'm so Eva, like... Is it Eva or Ava? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Eva. I, do, I don't know channel names. I'm old and I'm a hermit, man. I love her logo. Yeah, no, that is great. I love that. that I, just, I never call it a that. condom. It looks like a filled up condom. That's right. Filled with up with blood. blood. <laughs> what? <laughs> wow. See, Crystal's um, got it in him, eh? He does. He just needs a, a few in him. A couple of those craft beers. That's right. Man, I, no, man. I've got the uh, the Czechoslovakian Pilsner here, my friend. There it That's is. That's the Urkel. I'm the only but one. No, no, man. I, I'll, I'll talk to you about this off camera. All right. Who wants okay, to go so first? I need a minute because I... I actually just talked to someone about this recently, and it's kind of hard for me to judge that. So I'll let you gentlemen go first. I don't know. I think for me, I really like hypnotic poison on a woman. Which one's that? Which, so I know poison, of course, and I know each flanker kind of centers around a specific Hyp note. Hypnotic poison is the almond vanilla. Is that the white bottle? No, it's That's no a red one. Red? Yeah. I like that one too. That was a good pick. Hypnotic poison EDT. Okay. I don't recall that one. So it's kind of like a licorice anise almond vanilla. Yeah. Okay. It's a good one. Um, okay, give us two more. I think Angel I like on a woman. Angel woman. You're stealing all my picks, bro. Oh, man. There's eight billion perfumes. I picked two, and I'm stealing his fucking picks. So. <laughs> <laughs> well, okay. So, okay. The, the poison. The Montreal Canadiens. <laughs> hey, man. I'm, I'm, I'm stealing all your so draft picks. Backing up Mark. I'm stealing all his draft picks. Um. Okay, so the poison pick, okay, that totally out of left field, but I can totally get the angel thing because it is one of those groundbreaking fragrances from the 80s, wasn't it? Like 89? Yeah. And it was wow. just like, no, was it? I don't think it's that old. It's, it's, old. it's like 92. When is it? It was 92. I think. 92. Okay. Off of my head. Um, 92, 93. But it was just like, Women didn't smell like that before. And no, it's I all think it, cotton go ahead. candy and patchouli, right? But yeah, but it was just big and loud and slutty and sexy and sultry. Yeah, and I think totally. it was, it's like it kind of made perfume. that way. Stripper perfume. Yeah, okay. exactly, exactly. What is it? Hood Sense, who's one of my favorite people on Instagram. He's just like, I don't know, he posted something about like a guy being obsessed with a stripper's perfume. And I was like, it's it's Angel. Strippers only wear Angel. That's it. If you go to a strip club, it yeah. smells like Angel. Yeah. And it's like I like, Mark's like oh, I don't know. I've never been to a strip club. Mm. I like <laughs> Alien. Google or Alien. I don't know Alien as well. I know humanity very well and I don't um, Angel very well, but I don't know the others. Alien's that big, stanky Jasmine. Yeah, I don't know that one very well. <laughs> Galen likes Clinique Happy on a woman. Happy? Okay, interesting. <laughs> In the orange bottle? Even the bottles, like, the color they chose is a happy color, right? So happy. Yeah, I I like the men's happy, but I didn't really like the women's happy, like in terms of something that I would wear, consider kind of thing. Makes so what's your, third, what's your third one? For me? Yeah. I'd say Shelly Mar. Really? Any concentration or just Shelly Mar in general? EDP. 
Interesting. You you kind of covered a lot of bases. That's that's an interesting one there. Okay, and and Mark, what would you say? And for a challenging one, I'll give you one more for a challenging one. Go on. Maria used to wear um, MFK cashmere mood. Cashmere. What was cashmere? It was that, that was one of the first three, right? Yeah, yeah. I think it was. There's cashmere and belt. Cashmere, cashmere oud mood. So it's kind of okay. like that, that ambery oud. Very dry, very churchy, incensey. Because the original oud I didn't love, and then the three moods. I, I yeah, there was there silk, three of them. silk and, mood. Yeah, I can't remember. It's like silk, cashmere, satin, or what? I don't know. And then they did the fourth one a couple years satin later. Satin disgusting. I can't stand satin. I don't remember. I don't remember. Satin's all vanilla, like sweet, sweet vanilla. Mark's like moderating his FGN over there. I oh, am. Yeah. <laughs> he called me up. Is it right. Go ahead, Christo. It's Christo. So, and and okay, I'm just trying to says black it. opium. What's that? Beef Curtain says Black Opium, and that's the last perfume I had bought in for Maria, Black Opium, EDT. I, I know opium. I don't really exactly remember Black Opium, but I know for the most part, the flankers were pretty good. They're, um, all, they're all very much sweet, cloying bombs, vanilla bombs. So I'm going to go, and I, I, I just talked with someone about this the other day, and I'm going to go number 22. Okay, wow. Because I think it's classic. I think it's powerful. It's dominant. It's strong, sophisticated, um, elegant, modest. And that's kind of what I like in a woman's image. Mm. Um Next, I'd probably modest? go something. Sorry, you find it modest. Twenty-two. <laughs> um, Twenty-two. Yeah. Compared to five, yeah, five is kind of skanky and dirty and sexy and animatic. Oh, I don't know about modern. Modern five being skanky and I can see vintage being skanky and dirty. Well, compared to twenty-two, because twenty-two totally has an animalic aspect stripped out. God, yeah, now I want to wear 22 tomorrow. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm kind of waiting to wear it. I think I'm gonna, I might wear that soon. I as think well. I'd have to cancel Dior month. There you go. Do it. Oh, you should have canceled it three weeks ago. <laughs> I should have, yeah, that should have been canceled a long time ago. <laughs> um, I think I'd probably go like, um, I'd probably go, uh, Le Parfum de Therese. I think that's. <laughs> Again, a, a really great scent that would come off differently worn by me or worn by a woman, but I think it's still really, you know, unique. Um, just gives off a certain type of image, gives off a certain type of attitude. Um, and I'll give you, let me give you another one that I wouldn't, personally wear myself um let me say um hmm. let me think let me think i'd probably go for like a classic sheep or like a classic woman's sheep or something that i might not wear myself but i would have on my shelf parfum de trace is a sheep bro. it is and i know it was made in the 60s i think initially but i find it to be quite modern for what we're smelling now oh mark mark wants uh Is that rape for men Ooh, <laughs> yeah date rape for men <laughs> or is it date rape for her i don't know <laughs> <laughs> that's what i want a There's woman to new color. ones coming out for the girls oh, that's um, right that's right you know what i really like uh what is it she Fatal. The Guerlain, I like that. I think it's kind of okay. like, compared to the other two, I think it's a little bit more modern, a little bit more playful, a little bit more sweet. Um, French Kiss, I think that's nice as well. I think it's a little more bland. If I was to walk by a woman 
wearing French Kiss and a woman wearing Sheep or Fatale, I'd probably be more, you know, if they look the same. Sheep which one's that? That's Sheep or Fatale. Awesome. I think yeah, I'd like probably be right? more inclined to go towards them. I French think... Kiss is nice, but I find it to be really simple and easy. Is it my turn? You guys are waiting for me or something? Tis. Tis oh. your turn. Oh, shit. All right. I'm back in the seat. Uh, my favorite sense on a woman. Uh, I don't know. Sense on a woman is very personal. Um, I don't know. Things that I smelt in the past is really classified to those people. Um, so really my answer is going to be more of certain notes, certain fragrances that I would wear. Um, so I don't know for me, things that I like on a woman is gourmand scents. Um, I like Tonka Imperial's. Um, I would like something like Spiritus Double Vanille, uh, a high vanilla concentrate. Guerlain's smell really good on, on a woman. Um, I like darker scents. I, it's just like my taste, right? Um, I would like the polar opposite of me. So a woman that likes darker scents, that like, you know, a minty fresh, like a month fresh from James Healy would smell great on a woman. Um, I'm really gravitating towards more niche than designer on a woman. Uh, and you guys had both, you know, excellent ones that I would have chose too. Um, but like fruity florals, don't, don't do it for me. Um, I feel like uh, a woman that takes a chance with like maybe a heavy patchouli scent or something like that, uh, or heavy gourmand would be better um, for me. So I didn't really, I threw some examples there, but that's where I would go is somebody that has more of a bold taste than anything. I, you know what? I really like your patchouli compliment or your patchouli um, aspect there. Cause I, I totally agree. If, if I walk by and it doesn't happen much where I live or where I go like Toronto kind of thing. But yeah, if I walked by a woman on the street and I smelled like this, just like atomic patchouli bomb, as long as it's at least mildly, Dirty, you know, sophisticated, yeah. Not I cleaned up, like, wow. but Not yeah, I like that. I, I think that's a really good point. You know, something, you know, not fruity falls, but like some that have fruits in them, like a maybe like a lost cherry from Tom Ford, something like that would turn my head a little bit, and I'd be like, Whoa, um, especially if like a bunch of women walked by, I'd be like, mm, Somebody smells good or different than yeah. the rest of them. Um, that's where I would grab my attention. I'm not a fruity floral because that's all over the place. It's like a, a guy wearing beer de Chanel, like not, yeah. not that I, uh, boring, right? You yeah. smell like the next guy. Yeah, okay. exactly. Yeah, I totally agree. Yeah, and I, I, I think that's true. It's just more if you smell out of the norm where it's not just like really nasty and gross, yeah. but you smell – in in like interesting but it's not just like everyone else that will and i think patchouli is a note like that that doesn't really get utilized in modern perfume for men or for women like you'll see patchouli as a supporting note but you don't really see it as a main note like you used to 60s 70s maybe even into the 80s but yeah i i agree i think that's a really good point or even like something really um musky for women that's not just like, you know, fruity yeah. floral with some white musk. Right? I think a lot of women today don't want to smell like hippie patchouli. So every time there is patchouli listed, it's a very cleaned up, refined patchouli where yeah. they pull out all the, the good stuff, all the green, earthy, dirty elements are pulled out. And it's just a really clean mm. patchouli like like in Coco Mademoiselle or something. It's not it's not abrasive and and, and challenging at all, but. Yeah, just kind of there more for texture than I think. I think yeah, my taste goes the same way as uh, for for a woman. Like I, I feel like my taste would gravitate towards a darker scent for a woman. I'd find it more interesting. Um, it would it would pique my interest. If a woman was only wearing like a floral, right? 
that wouldn't interest me much. Well, there's certain florals that could do it, but if it's just a basic fruity floral, no. Nah. Yeah, I know. You know. Christo just pieced out. I'm sure he's gone to the beer fridge. Nice. So, Mark, are you working these days or? Yeah, I'm working from home. Cool. Yeah. And you're you're going to work, right? I, I think I caught that. I'm going to work. But man, I have a hard time getting up in the morning. Like, I can't sleep at night. I struggle to fall asleep. And yeah. I'm up till 12, 1, 1 sometimes. And I, I got to be up at 4 a.m. And most, so of the, most of my crew start at 5. And I stroll in around 8, 8 15. And it's fucking embarrassing, man. You know? So so it's nothing's changed. <laughs> yeah, you, you know, it's been going on like this for months. Uh, well, it's it's nice to see that you uh, you do have some work to go to because uh, yeah, it's some it's, people it aren't uh, keeps me busy. Yeah, exactly. But for yeah, for me, it's uh, they just told us our our office told us what last week. Grab all your shit out of your office. You're working yeah. from home, which. It's okay. It's just less productive. And uh, in my industry, it's all about freaking COVID this, COVID that. And it's that's what all our meetings are about. So it's just like this again, this again. And it's just, I don't know. I, I personally right now, I'm not enjoying work. But it is what it is. That's what's going on in the world. It's weird. Like as happy as I am to be working and making money, I'm like, I'm sitting at work and it's like so weird knowing everybody's at home. And all I can think about is why can't I be at home with everybody else and bitching about not being, able to work, you know? Yeah. Well, the one thing that, that, that's funny. I was, I was going through Pearson there when I text you, uh, what was that two weeks ago? Yeah. You were going to Winnipeg or getting yeah. back from Winnipeg. Yeah, and I was seeing people at the airport at Pearson, and they had their mask, but it was like the guy wasn't covering his nose at all, so he had like his mask like loosely on his face, and I'm like, what the fuck's that gonna do, buddy? Yeah, what's the point? What's the point of that? Um, but uh, that was funny. Some some guy had a whole like the whole you know how there's like um, you put it all over your face. Yeah, he had one of those with like the two um, the two things right here and a whole face mask, and it went. <laughs> like that guy's badass. Insane. But I saw a post. I don't remember where I read it, but it was basically saying he saw a couple driving in their car wearing their masks. How weird is that? Nice. Like in your car wearing a mask. Yeah. Man, I saw someone on my way home, like literally before we got on the stream, before we started talking about the stream, I saw someone with their windows up with gloves and a mask in their car by themselves. Yeah. How because weird is that? But you know what's disgusting? I just saw somebody post, when I go to the grocery store and I see the rubber gloves in the parking lot or in inside the shopping carts, people will do their shopping and then they'll oh. just leave their gloves in the cart. I think that's absolutely vile. And if I caught somebody doing that, I'd fucking shove those gloves up their ass. <laughs> I'd be sure to say something, you know, because that's somebody's kid that works there that's got to clean that shit up. Yep. And I'm sure they wouldn't want to be picking up somebody else's dirty gloves. Nope. Yeah, and they're still doing it for minimum wage, man. Yeah. Yeah. When you go, when you go to Tim Hortons, when you go to McDonald's, when you go to Burger King, when you go to Walmart, they're still making minimum wage, man. They're not. They're not on a special premium for this shit. Yeah. They're I'll either quitting or they're coming in to hire people specially for it. They're not getting paid any extra. I think a Walmart gave their employees a premium now. Really? I heard $2 raises. Yeah. Danger pay. Yeah. <laughs> Christo. <three>. Yeah. <laughs> wow. I don't know. Whatever, whatever. It's just, yeah, it's, it's just crazy. So, I'm I'm gonna give a big shout out to anyone who's working a shitty job, you know, standing at a cash. You know, some dirty old guy that smells like cigarettes coming through buying like, you know what I mean? Just like buying basic stuff. Like, 
Yeah. And they're like, <laughs> sir, please stand at the designated area. Yeah, I'll give them a big shout out. Back up, Bottle Boss. You don't do that, man. That's nasty. That's what he would do. Or she would in the carriage. I don't believe you do that. It's that bad. Yeah. Ooh, Darcy's about... in the back, Crystal in the pack. I don't know what that means. Or to put easy. Horsey's in the back. Love this. Well, gentlemen, I, I kind of need to – I'm kind of at my my uh, threshold here, let's right. say. Did you reach Yeah, your... yeah. Um, um, oh, what's Mark flashing around there? What is it? What was that? I, I'm a bit late. I just oh, saw that come up. Oh, Taroni. Or Taroni. Taroni. All right, let's wrap it up. Yeah, give us some final thoughts, uh, Eugene, Mark. Eugene, hit us with those final thoughts. I don't know. What what I'm most curious about, like perfume-wise and, and this COVID isolation and and just people not working money and spending money, I'm kind of concerned about the smaller brands and what's going to happen. Um, how are they going to survive? Or, you know, will they, will they be around once this is all over? That's what I'm most curious about. Perfume-wise, I mean... Personally, I just hope everybody's really staying in a safe place and and, and not congregating and, and doing crazy shit. Well, I guess that on obviously spring break. it depends on what your federal, state, provincial government is offering. You know, like if you're living in a country where they're going to say like, tough luck then yeah yeah you're you're up shit's creek like there's nothing to do but you know some obviously there's some countries that are doing more and there's some countries that are saying anything so i'd say most countries where most reputable indie brands are coming out of they're yeah. gonna get at least some support but yeah if you're in the wrong country and you've got to kind of struggling perfume brand or a struggling uh, company, then yeah, you're, you're probably going to have to close up shop. Like even, sorry, even before COVID started, there was that retail chain in New York. I can't remember the name. It's not lucky scent. What was the one that shut down? Oh, twisted Lily. Yeah. yeah. Like that's, you know, that's a bad sign of times right there. Yeah. That was before like anybody had mentioned coronavirus, right? Well, the on online business is, is where it's at now. Um, well, they were doing online. They had an online presence. I've ordered from them before. Yeah, but, you know, it might be discounters hitting them hard, though. The fragrance buys and the fragrance Xs that carry the same. guys were more niche than they were the things that you'd find at a, a fragrance buy. Okay, so I don't know. I'd like to be honest. I didn't ever look at their site, but... This is literally what I did my postgraduate in. And I kind of understand this and I know the, the elements that they're doing and the elements that they're not doing. And if it's a brick and mortar, which I'm pretty sure it was, right? Like they did actually have yeah. like a shop. Yeah. But they also had an online presence. Right. Okay. So the thing is when you're trying to do both, you need to focus on both. So they were probably either, and, and again, I don't know much about Twisted Lily, but that was it, right? Twisted Lily? Yeah. Yeah, okay. So it's like they were either heavily promoting their online presence and not talking about their, you know, brick and mortar store, or they were focusing on their brick and mortar store, hoping that they would just have people come in because it's a perfume store where you can smell perfume. I think they were separating them, weren't they, Eugene? Sorry? Were they separating the businesses? They weren't really advertising for each other, right? I'm not sure. The Twisted Lily versus their online presence. 
Yeah, I don't know. I don't know enough about them, but I, I think they closed down. I thought it was every the whole operation. But yeah. essentially, I think it's they're not making cuts. They're not looking at what they need to do to stay relevant. They're kind of hoping that they can just hang on to what was big in yeah. 2002, 2005. Yeah, I think like these these small businesses like the Min New Yorks and stuff like that may get hit more. Um, like uh, as far as niche and indie brands, I I think if your presence is online, most of them are online. Honestly, some of these smaller indie brands they don't have it's it's the big boxes that might get hit the hardest actually because they have all these big stores that are closed down now that maybe most of their sales come from right. Um, so they may get hit actually a lot harder than a, a small niche or indie, like a kerosene, right? Yeah, the, he might have like a whole bunch of doors that are closed now, but where but is I'm, his sales? Like is most of his sales online? Which, yeah. But again, sure he doesn't have a whole operation that he has to feed either, right? Exactly. But again, it all depends on what your online presence is versus uh, what you do in the stores. So. I, I don't know, like a brand like Slumber House, right? A lot of their stuff is online. He, he can do it from his, he probably has more time now to sell his stuff there and they'll sell out easily. Um, so I don't know. So yeah, so Slumber House, I just got to pick that up because I was in Portland where oh. dude's located. Oh, Apparently so cool. all he does every three or four months, he releases perfumes, they sell out instantly. And he pays his rent for three months and it's nothing. Yeah. 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 That's exactly what he does. It's, it's crazy. Um, because he's not flooding the market. He's not yep. sending tens of thousands of bottles that wind up on fragrance X yep. perfume by. And, and, uh, and it's smart. It's really smart move. And he does like one exclusive a year that he just sells it like just a hundred bottles or whatnot. And they yeah. go on eBay for like six hundred, seven. Like he had his last one was Zod or Zod or something like that. Yeah, and, uh, it's uh, yeah. For on eBay, it's like on five hundred, six hundred dollars, wow. uh, double the price basically. Uh, yeah. yeah, and you you know we've just seen it with Guerlain as well closing down their boutique, and that's you know the end of it. It'll probably never reappear in Canada again. That's a shame. I've never, I didn't see it. I'm, I'm kind of kicking myself on it. It was great. It was a really great experience. But again, it's just like looking at what I know now, there's just no way they can compete. And that's why I hate to see these brands closing down, these companies closing down, but they're not being smart. They're not utilizing services and, you know, people they don't want to pay a little bit of money to stay in business they'd rather go out of business and be stuck in 2005 right and it's i don't know it you know it obviously is you know biased in my field because it's like i'll go to these people and say hey do you want your business to close down or do you want me to help you and they'll be like well no i'm not going to pay you money to do that and then they go to i don't know it's just, it's a difficult one to kind of explain to people, like, if you don't modernize, you're going to go out of business. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's just plain like, and the, simple. plain and yeah. simple. Like the get land that you guys had in Toronto, um, the experience is, is where it's at. But like you were saying, Eugene, when you guys go there, it's mostly all uh, their makeup line, right? That they're, That's what their money maker is. That's what supports them and pays their bills. And, and you take a look at, you know, a fraghead like me, a Canadian, would I go out and buy a coconut fizz over there, which is what, $90 Canadian, where I could get a fragrance buy for 60 bucks Canadian? Yeah, for um, sure. Rouge is like 30 bucks at a discounter. Why would I go pay full retail for it? And just well, it. You, you buy it for the exclusives, I guess. But at yeah. the same time, like, look at me, I use a splitter. I just go, I want all those exclusives. He doesn't buy them from Canada and he splits them for me and I get them. Yeah. So, and we've been there a million times and we've seen how many people buying shit from there. It's not very often. Most of the time, the place was empty right. and there was never anybody standing at the cash register. Yeah. Even though they did do a lot of phone orders, 
still probably not enough to to justify holding oh, a what their rent was a million like, dollar rent per year. Ooh, yeah. Ouch. But they were they were good to I, I guess like you you shop there Eugene. Uh, I'm assuming Crystal also. So oh man, they were they treated us like okay, okay, let me rephrase that. Until very recently, they treated us like they roll out the red carpet. And to be honest, Eugene was the, the the big spender. When I went in with him, they rolled out the red carpet for both of us, but they knew who was spending the money. Right. And even when I would go in without Eugene by myself, which wasn't often, or with other people that they didn't really know, I still got the red carpet treat. Right. That's how awesome the staff was. Mm -hmm. Recently, the last time I went in before the, the boutique was, you know, or before I knew the boutique was closing, um, Brandon, who's been on my channel a couple times, he's from Saskatchewan, but he's been in Toronto for a couple years. We went in there. We walked in the front door. Someone kind of poked their head around from the corner, like where the Eugene will know what I mean, where the where the cash is. They kind of like, oh, hey, do you need any help? We're like, no, we're OK, thanks. Done. We were there for like 30 minutes and they never even walked 10 feet to talk to us. Yeah. Whereas before when it was, you know, I'm not going to name them, but the essays that we knew before. They would have been like, oh, hey, how are you doing? What have you been trying? What are you looking at? You know, what samples what do you want? want? You, you know, yeah. if we don't have them, we'll make them for you. Yeah. yeah. And we'll make and them in any size like, you want. Two mil, five mil, ten mil, what size samples? But it was also like, what are you trying at Chanel? What are you trying at um, uh, at Mall? What are you trying at, you know, the different count? And they, they'd love to know what we were doing because they were into perfume. And it just, it wasn't like that in the end, which is unfortunate. I know there is a lot of things behind the scenes, but it is what it is. Hmm. Interesting. Well. But All right, Mark, still come downtown. Let's go to Bloor. Let's go to Holtz. We'll go into the Guerlain Boutique. Yeah, yeah. You, you get know. your massage, you can we get your facial. No, we would plan on going downtown, but, you know, without even saying, Christo and I knew that the excursion would end up at the Guerlain Boutique. We'd be there for two and a half, three hours. We would get espresso. We would get champagne. And we would just sit there spritzing pure parfums, you know, and walking away with dozens of samples and, and whatever we had purchased. It was just like being treated like royalty, basically. Shame. But it was a treat, you know. It was a treat for us to go there. Yeah, yeah. So I kind of, I kind of regret that I didn't do that. That I just didn't go once, just with you guys. Uh, fair enough, man. You, you, nice. you got a a lot on your plate, so you know, fair enough. But you know, and they said everybody who's at the who everybody who was at the boutique when it closed is carrying over to the boutique literally like across the street. So right. it's not quite going to be the same, but it's still some really awesome people working there. Yeah. And and there's a strip club around the corner. Hey, where's Alex? Hey. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> Alex is... Chu, <laughs> hey, every it. time I've gone out with Chu, he's always come in his track pants and he's always asking me to go to the strip joint. <laughs> Dirty dog, eh? <laughs> track pants. <laughs> uh, what a dirt. And there's dog. always like drunk dudes from the Leafs games that, that show up. Yeah. And then they instantly boost your profile to like <laughs> the A lister. That's funny. Yeah. <laughs> oh. Two looking for some friction. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Well, hopefully this thing blows over this COVID thing, so I can go to Toronto and have a trip there. I know that uh, Zaharoff wants to to meet me and go to Toronto too. Yeah, that'd be cool. He should meet with Christo. Yeah, yeah. not a peep, not a peep from me. The Hamilton scumbag. 
But you're a hipster. You're underground, man. You wouldn't meet up even if he called you. Even yeah. if like, even if like Frederick Mall called you, you'd be like, "You're too dream for me, man." I'm. I don't. I don't. <laughs> I don't even have a phone. Huh? I don't even have a phone, man. Like that's. Well, so, there you go. <laughs> dude, that's so yeah. like two thousand. <laughs> oh, geez, you guys. All right. I got to go to, I got to, I'm not going to, I was going to say, I got to go to bed, but I'm not, I'm going to stay up and drink beer. Cause you guys are yeah. <laughs> lunatics. <laughs> That's only cause you still have some beer left, that, Yeah. but if you were out of beer, you'd be going to bed. <laughs> if I was out of beer, I'd be like falling asleep right now, but I don't know. Anyway. Mm. All right, let's wrap this up. I got to get up early. I mean, I can leave this running for you guys and just go yeah. to bed. You guys can, you know. No, I'm that. tired and I've got beer and I want to lay down and watch TV and all that shit. So You know yeah. what that means? He's, he's going on board, huh? <laughs> <laughs> oh, geez. Um, you might find Chew there if you log in. <laughs> Character I'll, assassination. I'll send you a link for the YouTuber on there too. <laughs> I'll send you the link. Yeah, you know what? It just came to mind, but I didn't want to say it. I, I didn't what's, want to say it. Oh, I got no shame. What, <laughs> I, I, I had to resist. I'm not going to say. You can say, Mark. What the name? No, no I'll send him the link. He'll find out real quick. <laughs> I miss. I miss something. I don't know. Sorry. I'll send you the link and you'll you'll it explain itself. Oh Jesus, dude, we got a five dollar uh, super chat backup hey. bottle. Models. It's time to get a backup bottle of one, one of the most generous dudes in the game. But he's he's also the guy that leaves his rubber gloves in the in the shopping cart. Oh, is that him? <laughs> that guy. I think he said he was joking though. Ah, okay. I don't know what your guys' schedule is like, but you know, with with all this free time, maybe we should come on, come on again. Well, since Mark was kind of summoned to come on, like within minutes or maybe hours of me knowing about it, then I'm going to consider him on standby. Yeah, you know he's free. <laughs> <laughs> No, man, I, I, I had no idea Mark was going to be on the channel. So I didn't know either. Cool. I was just like, me neither. Me to come on Saturday <laughs> night. And I was sitting Mark. here in my underwear and wife beater drinking craft beer. And I was like, <laughs> like I no shape to go on. Yeah, I, I was like, dust all over. I was like, I'm, yeah, I had Doritos, like, my <laughs> was orange. And Mark's I man had yellow so teeth. Creek. But I was like, I'm in no shape to go online, so we'll do it another time. Yes. Yeah, awesome. I had a blast. Um, so, yeah, Mark, absolutely privileged to uh, to chat, to uh, get on here live with you. So Same here. Awesome. Same here. We got the same taste, so it's kind of easy. <laughs> yeah, for sure. I think we all, like, all three of us kind of overlap in one way or another. And I think you've so I think you've been really influential to me as well. And I think, you know, Eugene, along the line, we've all been influenced by each other in one way or another. So it's pretty cool. The BBB <laughs> gives you money and then you promptly insult him. <laughs> That's how it should be. How it should be. <laughs> wow. That's a, like a character trait of mine, man. You guys haven't caught on yet. I love it. But BBB knows I'm fucking around, man. So do you got to kill this Eugene or do we have to leave? No, you guys can stay. Like, I'm going to be late for work in the morning regardless. Yeah, it doesn't matter. So if if you gonna... don't leave, you're, we're just going to hear you, like, tinkle and then have a shower. I was going to cook dinner. You're going to cook dinner? It's 11 o'clock. What do you have at 11 o'clock? Gonna have a TV. Oh, Aaron Shank shoots us for 
four forty nine four ninety nine. Oh wow! Hey, bravo! Should we insult him too now? Yes. <laughs> How can we insult the thumbs up? <laughs> All right, let's insult. Oh jeez! <laughs> All right. Now, if you guys, if you guys want to stay on, I don't. I mean, I've no, got. No, I, I'm pooch, so man. I'm, I'm done. I, I would love to do this again. Like I extend. Like obviously, Eugene. Like you know, we're you know conjoined twins kind of thing. But Mark, absolutely. Like this, I, I'd love to do this again. Yeah, we were. So, so let's be honest. We, like Crystal and I were talking about getting together, and I had some things come up at work, but. In the back of my head, I'm thinking, I wonder what kind of reaction we get if we're sitting here doing a live stream, sitting next to each other, and everybody else is isolating. I thought maybe we'd get some like kickback or, or you know, one of us is wearing a mask, but the others aren't. Yeah, yeah, yeah. People would be fucking <laughs> infuriated. I see all the posts on Facebook how people get upset when you're not isolating and stuff like that. I was like, ah, it's probably better this way. You know, because I'm still going to work. You were still going to work up until a few days ago, right, Christo? Yeah, like I was scheduled to work until Thursday. Yeah, see? So, so and, and just like you were saying, it'd be like no different than me coming in your work and buying something, right? Exactly, yeah, exactly. I don't want to get into the semantics because, you know, we kind of talked about it before, but yeah. It's like, ah, whatever, whatever. Whatever, whatever, exactly. Whatever. Maybe, uh, yeah, the Fragcom police would come and arrest us. Which would be Chad, because he's going to pop up again and say goodnight to Mark. <laughs> that was hilarious. I just show up. And yeah, he's yeah, was not, it, was, it was just like freaky. It's like dudes like ninja coming out of nowhere. <laughs> yeah, All right. you never know who's lurking no. alright gentlemen I as much as I've loved this Mark, Eugene alright we'll stop I wanking we together, man. We'll, talk, we'll talk to you guys soon okay Late. take care See Eugene, you. Mark, everyone beef you got it alright ciao guys <laughs>